opening round of Valvoline D1NZ coming to you from Hampton Downs Raceway, south of Auckland, about 40 minutes, and we are pumped to go. Stephen McIver and Steve Daniels in the hot seat yet again. Mate, we're here, we're back, we're ready to go, and a huge weekend, which includes the 67th New Zealand Grand Prix. Well, such a big meeting for New Zealand Motorsport, the 67th running of the New Zealand Grand Prix, but of course, our first one of the year, the Valvoline D1NZ, the Drifters, the Pro Boys, we're back in town. Now, what excites me, there's some new faces, I mean, Jeremy Slammett's coming to run a full season. I'm actually genuinely excited about Connor Halligan stepping up as the pro sport champ into the big time. Yeah, well, you've got a couple. You mentioned Jeremy Sammet out of Montdor in uh, New Caledonia. He's bought his car over. That's the former Jody Verhulst of Jody Donovan car. He's back with that uh, 2JZ uh, Super 86. <laughs> but as you mentioned, Connor Halligan did so well last year in the pro sport championships, taking a run with the big boys this weekend. And most importantly, Fanger Dan, three-time defending champion, is back. Fanger Dan Woolhouse, a three times champion. This guy here is the real deal when it comes to drifting. He's the top pro, he's been doing it the longest, and he's certainly going to be showing people why he's a three time champion. Ready to go? I can't wait. You ready to hop in that conference seat and do qualifying? Oh, I cannot wait. The time is now. All right, the time is now. Qualifying, opening round, Valvoline D1NZ. Let's go. Well, it's the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship Pro Championship Qualifying. The weather certainly didn't play ball. We saw a number of drivers struggling on track. But with some struggling, others shined. Let's have a look at some of those runs. Adam Camplin missing out on the top 10. Nose of that FC RX-7 shooting across the grass. Another one hard on the gas in the Vitor tyres, S13, Jace Brown. Michael Thorley running a nice line, not enough to get through into the top 10. Keeping it reet, our Australian visitor Jason Ferran out there on track as well. But let's have a look at our top 10 in the Galore Parts group. Supra, Mitch Lana out of Australia. A solid run by Mitch to move himself into the top 10. 63 points for Mitch in his first run. From there we moved to the Colab Digital Gas Tech, LS powered GT86 of Kurt Blackie. Kurt putting in a solid effort as well for ninth position. He would get 66 points for his run. Moving up into eighth place, a new man to the Pro Championship, Connor Halligan in the Jason Obers. Building the chemistry of roofing, 1.5 JZ Nissan, 66 points in the 919, that's Connor Halligan. After that we move to Scotty Dinsdale, 7th position, 69 points in the real estate with Pauline Dinsdale, Carmo Parts, Aldol, the Laurel, as he powers up over Scotty Dinsdale making a campaign into the Pro Championship for 2023. Straight up into the sixth place, this guy had a great run in Hampton Downs last year. We want to be wanting to emulate that. Cody Pullenbury in the 2JZ CK Earthworks S15. A solid drive by Cody. Second in the championship last year, he would want to be going for the top. Straight into Taylor James. New livery for Ch Taylor James, the pro wear. RB34 powered Nissan S14, making short work of this quick track here. Taylor James, it's the second run of the day, fifth place for him, 76 points, but into a new surprise, a fresh face into the championship, RHP, Reed and Harrison performance, 180 of Tauranga's Sam West, new to the pro championship, taking the step up from last year's pro sport. This one here was a surprise for third position, a great drive for him, of course, that is Troy Jenkins in the Carter Tyres machine. Powering out, Jenkins put in a solid effort, finishing with 78 points as we move to second position in the Century Battery Castrol NZ CTB Performance Machine. That was his first run, three points, zeroed out. Had a lot of work to do in a second run and it was a great job with 79 points for Fanger Dan Woolhouse, our three times New Zealand Drift King. But there could only be one person on the top spot and what a top spot it was, Sean Potros. Looking elite with the new elite sponsorship on the side of that 2JZ S15, Sean Potros. Early leader in the championship, going for gold.
qualifying is done for the opening round of Velveteen Deal and NZ, and these are the guys in 2023 who are making all the calls and giving out the points. Andrew Redwood, out of a seat and into the big seat. Uh, okay, so what are you looking after this year? I'm looking after style for the 20th year of D1NZ, and I'll be just mainly checking that all the drivers are doing what they're asked of in the judges' briefing, and there's going to be 10 additional points that are going to go towards what I call aggression and impact, and that's how much confidence they have in driving their car. I haven't heard that one before. Aggression and impact. I love this one. Joel Kanda returns. Okay, what are, what are you on? So I'm angle judge again for season number four. Uh, so I'm really just looking for the same thing I've been looking for every season. Uh, it's aggression, max angle where it matters, and maybe not so much, so much somewhere as well. So we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, so aggression times two. And look who's back. Out of the car, into the seat. Danum Temple, it's so good to see you, man. That's first and foremost. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling really good. Real positive. We had some good news at Christmas, so that's why I'm here to um, take on a new role. So, yeah, the shoe's on the other foot of not being, <laughs> not being driving um, and listening to the judges. It's uh, calling out. i am uh, got the lovely pleasure of being online. So, um, you know. What do you want to see? Just, yeah, obviously being online, listening to what we say. Um, we're, we've changed a few things. We're, we've all discussed it as a judge, and we're, we're, we're going to change a few lines to try and get the, the battles a bit more exciting. Um, and, yeah, go to from there. So there you go. Three judges, two new, and all they are worried about is making battles better for you in Valvoline D1NZ. It's the 67th running of the New Zealand Grand Prix. We've got the CT Frock drivers here ready. We've got four of them belted in to the passenger seat of these 1,000 horsepower insane pro drift cars. We'll get a quick word while we can. This is Tony Quinn's grandson. Mate, are you excited to get out there in the passenger seat? Mate, I love it. I've always loved drifting. Um, when I was younger, I used to go out on a quad bike with PVC pipe on, on the rears and, and, and light them up, so I'm super excited. All right, Ryder Quinn, he's uh, of course campaigning in the CT Frock, but right now he's going to run passenger with Taylor James in the Pro Wear RB34 powered Nissan S14. You've just got out of Taylor James's uh, insane car. How did you find that? Amazing. Um, it was pretty cool. Uh, even just describing how I was like, wah, wah, wah. like that even gets me excited. So being in it, it was amazing. Look, you're used to downforce and lots and lots of grip. These guys just use the grip so they can lose it again. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> they've clearly got it sorted. So I don't know. It's, it's so good. Oh, so uh, would you suggest that to anyone else they should go out and hang out with these drifters? 100%. If you're around, come down. 67th uh, Grand Prix. Oh, Callum Hedge, you've just got out of the uh, Napa Auto Parts RB32 powered disc and S14. How much fun was that? Yeah, I think I can say my friend uh, Dave Steedman. I just met him and I, I think he's a bit better at drifting than I am. Um, that was that was an unreal experience. Is that going to make you maybe go back to the sim and maybe, maybe change courses? Yeah, maybe I'm going to try drifting on the sim. That's um, such a complex way of driving, but they're also doing it in such a different way. So uh, I was really impressed by how much speed they can carry through the corner while being sideways. It blew my mind. So um, big thanks and big credit to his guys and D1NZ for giving us a go. Absolute pleasure to have this man here. Again, very best of luck going through into the uh, Grand Prix. <laughs> Morales, you've just got out of a 20B triple rotor with lots and lots of grip that just wanted to go insane for you. It was absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this is my first time ever drifting one, two, being on a track and drifting, and three, just being in a car like that. That was insane. Such an amazing experience. Like, 
Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, yeah. I was just talking to Callum Hedge, he might go back and uh, do a little bit of sim racing and uh, going up and maybe changing courses. Are we going to see you do the same? <laughs> no, no, definitely not going to be changing courses. But I definitely will hit this on the sim with Crocs on also, because that does add five horsepower, so that's it. This is so cool, so cool. Well, that's awesome. Look, good luck for the, uh, for the Grand Prix. Thank you, thank you. And you've heard it here first, Crocs give you five more horsepower. Finish the circuit, you're coming over for your first drift and all of a sudden the car goes backwards. Yeah, I mean, I really don't get how they do it. The car was backwards, upside, I don't know, everything was happening, but the, I mean, the drivers are great and I would never be able to do this. It gives me a few ideas maybe for the races that if it's wet, you know, I can fight a bit more than I am because they were just, yeah, facing backwards and somehow we were still made the next corner, you know? Did you, did you ever expect to be going to a Grand Prix meeting and then getting strapped in the behind a 1,000 horsepower drift car? No, definitely not, and my engineer didn't really want me to go. He thought I'd get injured or something like that, so luckily I convinced him, so, and it was a really, really fun idea. Uh, look, you are basically in top position going into the Grand Prix. You um, must be feeling really good. Yeah, I think um, the pace has been really good. We might not have showed it because we stayed more on used tyres, but um, the pace has been really good, the car has been good, and the track is really awesome. It's difficult, especially uh, T5, T6 is definitely not an easy corner and so bumpy, but um, it'll, it'll be fun. And I guess if all else fails, there might be a, uh, a future in the Valvoline D1NZ. Here we go, the opening round of Valvoline D1NZ at Hampton Downs as part of the New Zealand Grand Prix. And time to meet the class of 23, some of the key players. One of them's got to be Taylor James. Mate, you ready to go? Yeah, um, but last minute we weren't really planning to make this season, but got some sponsors last minute and uh, made a season sort of work. So, yeah. Well, well, well mate, that's great news. Uh, what changes have you made to the car? Um, we've had Valino, thanks to Carl Thompson, Valino Tires New Zealand, they've come on board, so they're a renowned tyre for being some of the best there is grip-wise and sort of longevity. So, yeah, that, um, Darren Kelly's done us a real good setup. We've changed a lot setup-wise and, um, yeah, a few other bits and pieces, quick rebuild on everything and it all seems pretty good. So, Mate, you got to feel good, don't you? Yeah, good to have my own car back. It feels, honestly feels real good. We've done a couple of laps down the end before. Everything feels real good, so, um, yeah, we'll feed it to it and see what happens. Are you going to keep that cat bound backwards all the time? Oh, try to. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There is no Valvoline D1NZ without the Mimico Napa boys. Adam Davies, Dave Steedman. Mate, I'll go to you first because you're the closest. How are you feeling about the season? Oh, I'm real pumped, mate. As you can see, we've got a fresh new look and we're really, really keen to get back on track. Yeah, I mean, uh, whose idea was the, the predominantly sort of grey look? Oh, AWE's graphics does all our liveries and we, we had a few back and, back and forths, you know, but we, we come up with a, what we think is a pretty cool design. It looks very good. Truck looks good too behind us. I mean, that, that, that's the big go-to, is right? Oh, it is, yeah. It's good, it's good having it, especially with days like this. You can just sit back and relax while you're waiting. So, no, it's good. Really, really handy. Yeah, but knowing you, you're not going to be sitting back and relaxing in the car, are you? No, no, never, never. No way. Is this your year? Oh, well, I would like to think so, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out. The one thing, you cannot miss the Mimico Napa boys. There would be no D1NZ with Alex Griffin. Now, I know you had a good back end of the year. Yep. So how about the front end for 23? Uh, front end, hoping we'll get some results. I'm feeling a bit more comfortable having a few stronger results near the end. Uh, the car's pretty well prepped. We're still building a newer, stronger motor and changing to a Motec shortly, so that's really exciting, hopefully in for Taupo. Um, so I'm kind of glad it's raining, because I'm a little shy on horsepower at the moment. But um, yeah, things are good, feeling good. Yeah, like the, the whole heading towards 23, brand new season. Do you get those little butterflies? Yeah, it's a clean slate. Everyone's equal again, and uh, everyone's got a shot. It's cool to see some new faces up from Pro Sport. Yeah. And uh, a few of the, the big boys have stepped aside, so hey, it's anyone's game. You see, confidence. Big boys have stepped aside. My time. Jenkins 1 and 2, Ben Troy, but there's something different this year on the front of their cars. I'll let you explain it to me. What, how are we going to recognise you this year in the 86s? Well, we've gone with a totally different livery screen this, screen this year, and it's uh, orange for Troy, yellow for Ben. Okay, so Ben, does that, is that really yellow? I look that's like neon green. It's uh, fluoro yellow. Fluoro yellow. Okay, just quickly, start of the whole season. Pumped? Yeah, pumped to get back in the seat. These are uh, epic cars and um, yeah, do it here at Hampton Downs. 
It's a pretty big weekend when you're part of the New Zealand Grand Prix. You know, it's only one of two Grand Prix outside of F1, so to have that exposure, pretty strong. Yeah, definitely. It's um, there's so many different classes here today. It's going to be a pretty jam-packed weekend, of course. So um, no, it's, it's it's exciting to do some to an event like this, and um, we did do it a few years ago at, at Invercargill. So yeah, good to be with some other classes. So you can't miss them, Mr. Orange, Mr. Fluoro Yellow. Okay, <laughs> Troy, Ben, Carter's Tire Service, Pukekohe GD86s. Yeah. One of the prettiest cars in Valvoline D1NZ is Wolfie, the Gas Tech Colab Digital GD86 of Kurt Blackie. It is pretty this year. Uh, why the colour scheme? Because I like it. Yeah, I just wanted to sort of stand out this season. You know, no one's really done these colours and I just wanted to stand out and, you know, that's what it's all about, standing out on track and looking different. Yeah, OK, mate, but you and I both know you want to stand out when it comes to being on the podium, right? Well, exactly. We're definitely chasing podiums this year. We've got the car, we've got the team and we've got good partners backing us this season. You, you're feeling confident? Yeah, feeling real confident. Um, we've got Gas Tech uh, Services and Colab Digital jumping on as naming rights this season and, um, yeah, so we can't, can't wait to get into it, really. Am I allowed to call it pretty or is that not cool enough? You can, you can call it pretty if you want, but... Or should we call it sick? Yeah, call it sick. Call it whatever you want, mate. Wolfie. OK, we'll call it Wolfie. Wolfie is sick. One of the meanest cars on the grid is the Galore Part Supra. Driven by an Aussies, come over, Michelana. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Are you excited about being part of Valvoline D1NZ? I am. I'm very excited. I can't wait to get out there. Yeah, well, mate, that's, that's that classic Aussie thing, right? I know I'm going to be quick. Oh, I'm going to give it a good go. Obviously, we haven't had much uh, track time this weekend yet, and obviously now the rain's coming down, so hopefully practice doesn't get cut short and we'll put some laps in and see how we go today. What do you know about Valvoline D1NZ? Uh, not heaps, but all I know is I'm going to go out there and push really hard, and if anyone gets in the way, we'll see if we can move them out the way. Oh, OK. <laughs> Throwing it down now. Mitch Lana, Galore Part Super. Watch out. Who races a purple station wagon? He does. Jason Farron, another of our Australian visitors. Uh, welcome, mate. How, you bought your baby out. Sure did, yeah. It's stoked to see the Barrow Ags on uh, New Zealand soil. Mate, i got to ask you a question. It's more violet, really, isn't it? The colour, violet. Yeah, violet, lilac, whatever you want to call it. Purple. OK, well, what gave you the idea to, to drift a wagon? Uh, something different, really. I've, I've always been into the, the R31s, the nice little boxy 90s, 80s shape. And, um, yeah, the, the station wagon is just like, not many people go out there slaying in the station wagon because it just seems wrong. So that's that's pretty much why. Stand, some stand out. And, and how does it roll? It's absolutely amazing. So we got second place in the Australian in high tech, uh, the national series. So um, yeah, now it's time to take on these New Zealanders, show them what's up. These new, so we are these New Zealanders. Well, you're more than welcome to come and take on the big boys at D1. Are you excited? Yeah, absolutely stoked to have my own car this time. We obviously did the final round last year in the Borough car. Didn't end too well. Ended up in a, a bit of a pickle there, but uh, we won't talk about that one. Yeah, so it's the Keep It Reach Skyline Wagon. We'll call it that one, right? The Barrow Wags. Yeah, check it out. Keep it Reach. Keep it Reach. You've got to have a defending champion in the house. Here he is, fanging down in the RTR Century Batteries Mustang. You back, baby? Yeah, yeah. I've had a good off season, but um, yeah, here back here to defend my championship. Now the car looks a little bit different. What have you done? Oh, uh, we gave it a bit of an overhaul. I was pretty hard on it at the final round at Bay you Park, were. and you know, it actually looked like a really sad face or something. <laughs> you know, when I saw photos of it at the finals. So um, we put all new carbon fibre rear panels on it, and um, we gave it a, a big birthday pretty much as soon as we finished and uh, the, the championship. So. We had a good break and all we did was re-wrap it. We've made some extra little pieces, to cosmetic things to make it look a little bit different. And yeah, feel good about driving it and we're here. Really hey, we feel, but we feel good about having you back. Yep. Mr. Three-time, but will he be Mr. Four-time? You'll have to watch Valvoline D1NZ. Well, let's have a look at the track layout for Hampton Downs. Well, it's a fast acceleration down the straight out of turn number one. It's into outer zone number one, a quick switch into the right hander, and then it's up and over the hill. It's full throttle to an inside clip before powering out of the section. Stay tuned. After the break, we're straight into battles.
It's a brand new season of Valvoline D1NZ and it's all part of the New Zealand Grand Prix. Now the show begins on the Saturday because Mother Nature has blessed us with warm, hot, sweaty, muggy weather. Blue skies and nice breeze is just blowing all that smoke into the fans here on the on the uh, fence line. Hey buddy, turn around for a moment. Talk to me. Uh, you love your drifting? Yeah. yeah. Fight by there. Oh, not really. What do you what do you love about it? Is it just that that we've seen go past? Uh just the smoke and all the little cars that go past. Mate, I'm glad you're out. Just love the smoke. That's what it's all about. That smell, that that sort of organic feel. Let's just walk down the line. Hey, uh, gentlemen, excuse me. You don't look like sort of natural drifters, uh, but you're obviously hanging on the fence here. Like I, I don't mind a bit of this. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. Don't it's give me the not. Too, don't give me the not too bad. Look, look at this. Really look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Kurt Blackie. Look at that. Wolfie. Let him go. Nearly as good as star cars. Your star, that's, mate. Your star car wouldn't even get a match up here. Let's just. Let's, <laughs> Hey, but I'm glad you're here. We can cater to an older generation. That's the most important. New faces, new voices. You, hey kids, how are you? No, you put you put those earmuffs back on. Put them back on. Good girl. You'd look after your hearing. Very, very important. See, people just sitting here. They've got their waters. Very friendly. Got their waters, uh, mate. Oh, just quickly. D1 drifting. How how much fun? Yeah, terrific. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, is that Troy Jenkins' dad? I, did, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> hey, Troy Jenkins. Oh, you do look at... Oh, you poor bugger. Hey? <laughs> he looks like his dad. But the boys look hard. The deliveries look good now. Fantastic this season. Ready to go. Did you pay for it all? No, not a cent. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you, mate. So I'm, I'm learning all the time, right? We just on. Hello, girls. Hello. Are you, are you all part of this whole car? This, this is Troy Jenkins' mum. <laughs> Oh, look, it's a family affair. It's all in the family. It's, well, it's, of course, it's all in the family. Uh, the boys... This year. You're excited about the, the, the potential for their season? Yeah, absolutely excited. They look amazing and they've put a lot of work into it this season, as they do every season. So, yeah. But how good is it to be out here at a Grand Prix meeting? Because this is a, this is a big deal. Don't you, do, you, do you genuinely as a mum just love this? Do you like get right into it? I think, yeah, I think it's in our blood and you know, we've just been doing it for so long now. You're shaking. <laughs> you're, going to, you're shaking. Well, I've got two boys about to, to go, go out, out there, there and drift, so. <laughs> do, you, do you go out and do the old shaka bra? Are you a shaka bra mum? I just, I just leave it to them. <laughs> All right, we just, we just keep move, moving along here. Hey, how old, get, get down here, stand down here just quickly. How old are you? That's Alex Pelier and crew. You, you love you. You love your drifting. Yeah. How many times have you been to the drifts? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. Hey, get on down here. Hell on Ashfield. So, so you're uh, you're back in Chris Van Drift are you this weekend? Yeah. Please don't tell me you're a son, and I didn't know that. No, um, he's my coach. He's your coach. All righty, you Carter, right? Yeah. All righty. What do you think of this drifting? <laughs> Pretty mean. Pretty mean is the fact that Cole Armstrong became a father this year. That's right, he became a father. Lovely Lydia has presented him with a little fellow called Theo. I've seen him. Looks like his mother, thankfully. That's the most important thing. Let's say, say good day to the commentary team for season 23. Yes, Cole two-time Armstrong and of course Steve the Māori Daniels. Hello boys, how about this, eh? Sunshine, blue skies and smoke and noise. Yeah, it's so good to be back and obviously uh, first time ever for Yes, my new son Theo and uh, Lydia are up here. The whole family, uh, first event for the for the year, and the sun's out, so pretty cool. Obviously, we're tucked up here in the box, uh, it's Steve. Tough. It's tough, isn't it? It is, but uh, cool to be back. Twentieth year, isn't it? Do you love what you? Yeah, twenty years of D1NZ. Um, are you loving what you're seeing? Oh, I am. It's good to see the, the the boys have been working hard over the off season. Look at all the cars, looking immaculate. Um, I've just gone and had a few words to a few of them. You know, it was a a tough one out there for qualifying, you know. Take it easy. You so don't who, have many laps here. To? Uh, Kurt, we had a had a yarn to him. Uh, we had talked to Fanger. What are you going to do, Fanger? You know, three-time champion. You show off. Here to here to do well, a fourth he year. Here he is now. Look at him, just out there having a bit of fun. He's telling me about his uh, off-season uh, fun he's been having with his young fella as well, out camping and whatnot. But Jace Brown as well. Good to see him back uh, there in Frankenstein. Yeah, Jace Brown, of course, won the first. Well, he came out of the first round or first and second round last year on top, uh, leading the championship. Didn't get to the other end because Tanga took it off him, but that's a man to watch. Yeah, oh, I think, uh, yeah, he'll, he's changed a few things in that car and, and a different mindset, as uh, Stocky had said. 
yellow Clean is Ben. Slate. Orange is Troy. Yeah, and I did see, I have to say, Troy drove really well. Look at the understeer straight away on Ben's car as he pulled in here. Oh, I missed this, Steve. Just really critiquing what's going out there. I love seeing what's happening. Look at that, Troy, right up in there. Got a little bit smoked out by the looks. New judges as well this year, you know. Old Slimmy's up there. Yeah, Dan Templeman, good to have him. He's uh, online. Of course, we've got Andrew Redwood as well. Yeah, good man. What's he? He's on st style. He's on style. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's on style. Yes, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. And then Joel, Joel. Joel Counter. He'll yep, be back doing again. back on angle again. So yep. those guys certainly had a lot to say to the drivers, ensuring that that was almost a back end. Yeah, and that's something that, uh, obviously, first first round back, everyone's jacked up, pumped, want to push really hard. It took me a long time to uh, to get this in my head. My old man used to say it all the time. What are you doing? Doing 100% all the time. 90, back it up, back it up. And you can see out there the guys are all excited, trying to do big entries, and it's it's about being consistent. Well, these two are essentially teammates this year. Look at Taylor's car. Got the new tyres. Carl Thompson's really set him up. Uh, with a lot of grip. Look at the front wheels just trying to lift here as he drives up over the centre section. Mitch Lana uh, in the Glore 80, uh, 86. Yeah, oh, no, New Supra. Zealanders Supra. never drifted that Supra. Supra. What? The New Zealanders never drifted it, essentially. Of course, it was uh, campaigned by uh, Drift Squid Jake Jones last year. Now Mitch Lana out of Perth. Yeah, dead right. Now we've got the uh, Napa Mimico boys. Now, those cars are looking beautiful. I love their rig as well. Rexy boy, he'll be no doubt here watching uh, his three amigos out there. Dave, what is he doing, you know? Coming in too fast. Got to calm it down. It's a Grand Prix. It no is. laps. <laughs> no None. Laps. So, oh, he looks like, well, just giving it a bit of a... Make sure you don't drift outside the section. There we go. They bring their cars down to a stop. Beautiful looking uh, retro scheme this season for the Ryko 24-7 Napa Auto Parts Mimico machines. Um, Cody oh, Pullenbury on the left-hand side. And, of course, Sean Potros. Pullenbury second last year in this round. Sean Potros got things so to prove. So my pick for this year, I'm going to say it now, either one of these two. Wow, that's a big call. Yeah, they drove so well last year. Uh, really blew me away just how consistent they did. Sean needed to just back it up just that little bit to really keep uh, putting himself in those positions where, you know, you get caught out with a car in front of you or a bit of contact. So uh, it'll be real good to see how both of these drivers perform in this first round here. It'll set them up really well for the season. Well, it's going to be a, a big season, big... Well, how these many rounds have we got? got? Five rounds? Five, this, uh... five rounds. These mics are real weird, eh? Pushed up against <laughs> your lip. <laughs> All right, uh, well, we'll watch these ones here. Is Cody Pullenbury creeping in? Yeah, big entry. Cody drives really well at this uh, track. He can get on throttle really early with a lot of angle. Look at him here, pulling away from Sean Potros. Crazy right there, uh, what car control that young fella can have. Well, what's happening down there? You, I think we've got Stephen McIver is down with possibly the judges. Oh, he's loving it down there. Look at the smoke. You're trying to bring it in there. Oh, I wish I was down there with you, it's, mate. It's, it's the opening round, boys. It's the opening round. I just want to just get it in the lungs and smell it and suck it up. Uh, we're actually in the judges' tower, right? Jealousy. And it's, uh, <laughs> mate, I, I, I don't think I realise how much I've missed this. <laughs> Look at Dana Gentlemen behind. Gentlemen, one about judges, mate. Uh, I know you guys have been very de definitive. You want great execution and stronger battles are you seeing that uh, from what we had yesterday and now with the practice so far definitely it's been just the dry weather the track script up and uh, everyone's on it so far so good uh, mate how how good is it at the moment to feel that we're, we're back for the season it's amazing it's that's what we've been looking forward to since when did we finish up july with a pretty wet season all through 2022 so to have a a day like today and a nice dry track, it's, it's awesome to see cars back out and people driving in anger. Okay, you put that microphone down for a moment because we're going to use this one because we're... I, I, oh, there's, there's Banger Dan. Banger Dan. Who else would be making that much noise? How important is it, just briefly, how important is it to have the defending champion back who's been here since Adam was a cowboy? Year 20, by the way, of Velvet in D1NZ, to actually show the way and, and help, help you guys with the young boys. Pivotal. He's, like you say, he's been here 20 years. So it's to have somebody like that, he's he's a big figure in D1NZ. And to have him back, and he's so helpful around the pits, he'll lend anyone a hand. If a car breaks down, he's there. If anyone wants to ask a question, he's there. He's a real pivotal character here. Nice words, Joel. Get back and do your job, OK? OK, so we're going to do a top 24 today. And can I just say, this, this has made my day for one reason. 
sunshine, blue skies, track with rubber all over it, lots of noise, lads, lots of smoke. D1 is back in 23, boys. It sure is, Stephen, and look at this. We've got the barrow wagon out there, and Kurt Blackie and Wolfie starting to get a little bit comfortable in the cars. They're getting some dry laps in there, getting some heat in the tyres, Steve. Oh, man, I'm, I just can't get over this wagon out here. I mean, we've seen them in the past, but that R31 Keep It Reet machine of Jason Farron out of Australia, that thing is so cool. Barrow under the hood, too. I mean, who wins on this one? Neither you or I. Yeah, I know, you're actually right there, but it is. It's a cool car. It's cool to see Jason coming over. I've seen him uh, in the off-season in Japan, having a bit of a play around over there, getting some seat time, so it's good to see. Here we go, Michael Thorley leading out here. Adam Camplin in behind. Of course, practice time ahead of the top 24 battles. They're getting some laps in, I have to say. This rolling pit is really good. The guys are making it, you know, they seem to be making their tyres last. A little bit wide there from uh, Thorley. Pushing a little bit deep as he came over the top of the hill, but getting uh, gathering that line back, you know, they want to get the feel before they get into the battles. It's good they've uh, jumped straight into it. Shake those cobwebs off from the wet day yesterday to uh, a nice, fast, dry day today. And let's talk about the yesterday. Um, well, as we see, I mean, look at the... Let's not talk about yesterday. Let's just talk about these two incredible cars. Yeah, it's a nice car. Obviously, I had a chat to, to Mitch. Jump into the car, he hasn't done much work on at all. Two J2s, normally used to the V8 power. He's got a uh, very clever old man who's over here supporting him, helping uh, keep this thing under wraps. And, Struggles and to see over the bonnet, but he said doesn't matter how tall you'll be, just because of the type of car that it is, you just, he said that he's trying to get that muscle memory, essentially, of where the car is in the front. Oh, hard to say, you know, tall body. I've got a pretty tall one. I might jump in the seat and I, yeah, see well, if I could see over the bonnet. I, I think, I, did I ask Darren? I know that Darren's about, you know, seven foot two like you are. And I think everyone was saying, very difficult car. You've actually got to try and work out exactly where the car is. Yeah, you'd say you're probably right there, Steve. I've never actually sat in one, so can't tell you. But I know uh, Fanger would be in the exact same position with the Mustang. Yeah. Big bonnet on those things, but... Hey, good to see. The guys are starting to get some dry lines here. Dave getting some aggression, chasing uh, Adam down here. Man, these cars look cool together, eh? OK, look at this one here. We're about to see this happen in real thing. Top 16 battles, those two are facing each other to see who takes on Fang at Animal House. Oh, I know. What are the odds with that, eh? How many times? Hey, always the way. Start of the season. Yeah, let's start it with a bang. Oh, not that kind of bang. We're both <laughs> banged up together. What's funny, what, no, nothing's funny these days. I saw the stats last year, about this time last year, and the two drivers that had drifted the most against each other was you and Darren Kelly. Yeah, without a doubt, you know, and probably if we looked at the stats on that one too there, Steve, I'd have more wins. Absolutely. <laughs> he just got lucky in that third season. That, yeah, was that, one, that season you retired. Yeah, yeah, I did. had motor failures. But look at that, Sean Potros, massive entry here. Cody Pullenberry right behind. These two are going to be two guys to watch. Look at that, Cody right up in the pocket there. Doing really well, Sean. Nice lead line, though. You know, we said it all last year, right? We you, did. You're confused. I'm always Good confused. lead line makes a good chase. Yeah, and that's that's a chaseable lead is one thing that we've always talked about. And that's the thing is that you also have with people you trust. That's it. That's it. So it's good. Oh, who, who's your man here? Here he is, McManaway. Well, M. McManaway. Look at that thing just pitching up big time. The front looks like it's about to take off. A little bit of struggle there uh, by James, but once again, not many uh, laps in the car. Big horsepower car, that 180SX. Yeah, we've got a Scotty D in front in the uh, in the Laurel. Of course, that's uh, John Atwood Performance's car, the Carmo Parts Real Estate by Pauline Dinsdale Machine. Yeah, I'm, I'm gutted that's not here. Right? It's not quite finished as BMW. Yeah, he's going to be right? uh, debuting a BMW, hopefully for round number two. Yeah, well here we go again. This is awesome to see. This is now their third battle. Jason leaning out of uh, Kurt Black in behind. Throwing that big car. I like big cars, you know. I've always had a big four-door. Yep. Look at the barrel pushing a little bit wide here. Really getting that grip down. I, I think he's running Zestino, as you were saying, but no trouble for Kurt Black in behind there. Something the judges said in uh, driver's briefing. If you are the chase car, just follow the lead car. Don't worry about line. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just sit in behind. Mimic oh, what's the word? Mimicking? Mimicking, that's it. Yeah, I nearly got my words caught up there, mate. You saved me. Mimic that lead car. Right up on it. And by doing that, you're going to create that love other word we love to use, fluidity anyway. Big and time. that's going to assist you with proximity. Yeah. And that's going to get... 
It all rolls down, eh? Yeah. It all rolls down. So you can get caught up in it. Oh, you need to be the um, you know chase car. Really follow the line. Well, see, like, if you're still right there, too much angle for the lead car. The chase car who's trying to mimic it, you can see, where is he right now? He's nowhere. Why? Because he took the same terrible line that the lead car did. Correct. And it's a hard one when that happens, right? What, what do you do? What do you do? You know what you do? You go down to Stephen McIver. He's down, I think, in the pits. Who are you talking to today? Yeah, Connor Halligan, of course, Pro Sport Champion, stepping up to the big time, buddy. I love the smile on your face. Yeah. Uh, are you feeling it? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. I, there's nothing better than coming to D1 and, you know, driving driving all the best guys in the country. It's just, yeah, it's nothing like it. Not yeah, how's the car rolling? It's good. It's good. It's going really well. Um, we had a couple of small issues yesterday with the battery and stuff, but we got those sorted and um, got a few laps in, so feeling pretty good. And, yeah, the car's going really well, so it's feeling a lot better. I made a few adjustments to the front steering just before that practice session, so, yeah, it's feeling a lot better. Yeah, and no fear about what's going on, stepping up against the boys that are, are used to being, you know, those battlers very, very close? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, it's, it's pretty much the same thing as pro sport, really. But, you know, obviously you've got the bigger tyres on the back, so that's a bit of an adjustment. I'm still getting used to those, but um, that chase didn't feel too bad just now. So, yeah. No See pressure, mate. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> well, good, hey, good to have you in D1, buddy. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, well, back out on track, Cole Armstrong. And uh, we talk about trust in the lead driver. Scotty D just holding back. Yeah, like you said, eh, isn't he borrowing this car? Yep. Yep, borrowing it. Obviously, he wants to keep things together. Just have a bit of fun, get some points on the board. Scotty made it clear, though, that he doesn't care what he does to that car. He said, I don't care if I put it upside down, it's not my car. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> had that same uh, same philosophy for a long time. But it kind of uh, it ends up costing you when you do that. So unless you've got a real good mate who said, nah, don't worry about it. It's well, that's what good. he said. He said that John Atwood Performance is the mate. That's the car. And um, if he breaks it, John's so good at repairing it. He wants to make sure that he can get some. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he won't want to do that. But here we go. Let's see how Jason takes off here with a big bear of power. Look at the car sort of lunging around. A lot of weight on those rear wheels. Grabs the handbrake a little bit there. Thorley understeering through the section. Nice midline through there by Jason, but still pushed a little bit wide. Didn't quite yeah. get the nose back into that inner clip here. This, so Michael Thorley had issues behind uh, the last person he was behind. I don't know, I can't remember who it was. What's the go here? I mean, it's, have we seen it two times in a row? It's probably just getting comfortable in the car again. Yep. A little bit of understeer by the looks as they go to initiate. A lot of rear grip you can get in uh, this car, in these cars, and it can uh, really hinder you coming in. Well, let's have a look at uh, what are the replays. You see, so watch here. He's trying to trying to grab the handbrake, and obviously, just I don't know. It's like it just died down, or yeah, lost power, or something. It's it's a hard one through that section, especially right there. You want to be on throttle really early to get a lot of drive to come up that hill. This, this course is 17 seconds from start to finish. Yeah, it's one of the fastest courses. Actually, the only other course that's actually a similar speed, but you're entering it uh, just under 200 kilometres an hour. Sadly, we're not here and probably not there ever again, is uh, Pukakawi. Hey, let's go down to uh, Stephen McIver. I think he's talking to our Panhead top qualifier. Sean Potros is the Panhead top qualifier. Just come in. He, oh, it's hot, man. Get out of the car, brother. It's OK. Plenty of time. Man, you've got to change the car of that race suit. You know, just brings all that heat in. Black race suit, you're going to be cooking like your own sauna, mind you. It is what it is, you're right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's hot out there, huh? Oh, yeah, definitely hot in the car. I've been sitting out on track, but once you get moving, it's all right. Yeah, so how does it feel now that you're in some really good weather? Um, yeah, feeling good. Uh, done a battle there with Cody and Super Smokey. Got each to drive, so, yeah, put on a show, I guess. Feeling confident? Uh, yeah, yeah, feeling confident. The car's performing well and the crew's looking after it just as much, so yeah. So so you've got you've got the uh, you've got the run straight through, get the bye through the top sixteen so you can see what's going down, right? Yeah, yeah, so I get to watch uh, either Alex or Ben and whoever takes it out will who we see in the top sixteen. I don't well, I don't want to bring any bad luck upon you, but are there any slight issues with the car or is she just running sweet? No, nah, she's running sweet. Uh, last year we had um Minor issues with it blowing a little bit of oil due to the rocket covers, but we've changed that in the off season, and now it's just tyres and gas, and yeah. I know it's been a long wait, and it's been a long day today and yesterday, but just briefly for those that are hanging out for D1, how good to be back in the seat and smoking up? Oh yeah, it's been a long time, um, and it's good to be back in these cars, back around the Drift family, like yeah, that's good. 
that's what it's all about. Good luck, man. Thank you. There's your Panhead top qualifier in the form of Sean Potrov. Yeah, and he will probably go in as one of the real contenders for Fangadam. The first battle coming up, one of the new kids on the boat, Alex Pelia, against Ben Jenkins. Now, just to note, and I said this yesterday, if you're watching, well, actually today when you're watching the preview to the, to the whole season, Ben Jenkins, uh, his the front, front guards are bright yellow. Troy, look over there, Tony, see? There's, there's Troy's car. They're, they're red, and that's Troy. So, okay. So uh, that's that's what we can look forward to. Uh, so much to look forward to, which is round one. Valvoline, D1 and Z. Keep it right here. The battles are about to begin. and loaded to the opening weekend of Valvoline D1NZ live on Grand Prix weekend at Hampton Downs Raceway, 40 minutes south of Auckland, but we are in the heart of the Waikato. Well, we're on the edge of the Waikato. This is the Waikato region, but Hampton Downs has turned it on this weekend for the opening weekend, and you've got to say, these guys practiced yesterday in horrible conditions, but they got out and did the job and qualified. Now it's time for the battles. We're going to start with the top 24 and move our way all the way down to find who wins Round number one, Cole Armstrong, Steve Daniels. Let's go racing, fellas. Uh, let's go racing, Cole Armstrong. First first battle of the season here, Steve. I'm excited. Uh, it's good to see a bit of smoke out there. Look at that blue sky. What a battle this is going to be. We've got a bit of a veteran here. I'd like to call <laughs> Benny Jenkins. Ben Jenkins, of course, a Carter's Tyson, also Toyota Parts 2, JZ Powered Toyota GT86, going up against a Honda S2000 out of, of course, uh, Christchurch. It's Alex Blair. That's it. Here we go. Alex Blair leading out on the uh, right hand side as he initiates. Look at that car transition quite nicely come into the section. Ben keeping a bit of distance as he comes up over the hill. Obviously, think he's got a bit of drive. Look at that. Closing that gap in, just sitting back on that rear quarter. Nice sort of textbook uh, chase there by Ben Jenkins, but a good lead, I have yeah, to say. Yeah, strong lead by Alex Pereira in the uh, Jays Racing. That thing there, two-litre engine. Really strung out, no two lift. No wonder he can't he's lift over he's the moon. Up. First, first battle out, awesome. Top 24. Here we go with the Rep Repco replay. Look at him, transitions really nicely. Good transition to angle, holds it all the way through there. A little bit wide on that inner club as he comes up over the hill, but a nice line, pushing wide, getting that uh, outer wheel, as the judge of, judges asked, uh, into that last zone, and been right there. Well, a strong first run up. That's the first one of round number one of the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Alex Blair out of Christchurch going up against essentially the local man. They live, like, next door. Yeah, their, their workshop's just up on the back there, so this is definitely their, their home track. Uh, ben would have definitely been disappointed yesterday after his sort of qualifying stands, but uh, what a great drive conditions. by his brother though. Third, uh, third place, I think it was for Troy. A stunning run. Real good to see. Real good to see. So let's see how uh, Ben goes out now with the lead. He'll be uh, no doubt going for it like a rocket ship. Now they've all got a lot of grip. We're just coming. They're now just coming past us here. So. Won't be too long before they're back up at the start line. Well, heading down the front straight now at Hampton Downs. Out of the turn number one, we'll see them line back up, rack them and stack them. We'll do it all over again. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> we'll be interesting to see. Now, obviously, 
like you say, two litre versus three litre. Maybe a bit of a horsepower difference, but I'd say that uh, S2000, something I have not seen drift uh, here in New Zealand. Probably actually just haven't followed it down in uh, the South Island. But the, uh, the, the boys from the Jenkins team were saying that they should call this thing the uh, Team Disco Tiger. Carter's tyres, Pukakaui on the side. Let's see what Ben can do this time, Cole. But yeah, nice and wide there. Bit of a stall up there by Ben, but look at that. Good angle through that section and just really, Alex caught himself out there. Really got in nice and close in the pocket, but where he wanted to get on the throttle, wasn't able to, so he had to back out. Most important thing at this time here is, of course, Ben had to finish the lap. The car in behind, over-rotated, coming through the turn number one. If he had the same thing, it would have been 0-0. Zero, zero. He doesn't. He's going to have the advantage. Of course, that's going to essentially mean he's going to go straight through. Yeah, the striping Tiger, uh, I'd say, uh, may have advanced on that one. With, disco, um, baby, disco. Oh, Let's have disco a look and see tiger. what happened. Yeah, look, nice transition here. Getting, uh, just rotating the car nicely with the judges wanting for the initiation. A little bit of a handbrake here. Look at Alex right up on the inside here. Probably got a little bit close. Nearly nearly had a bit of contact there. Had to, uh, oh, oh, there we go. He did have contact. Debeated the left front tyre. That wow. was gone. So he did. Got a little bit too close there on Ben Jenkins. Uh, yeah, debeating his front tyre. Obviously creating him uh, to rotate. Wow. Let's have another look and see at uh, what happened there in the uh, Repco replay. Yeah, watch this here. So this is a deceleration zone. So Ben's on the handbrake, bang, on throttle. Alex, man, oh, so we just miss it. We just miss it, but there's there must have been a bit of contact. So as he's come through, it's almost like Ben has accelerated through, and that has caused contact with his rear end to the left front tyre of Alex Pelier, maybe? So I'm thinking probably Alex probably <laughs> wasn't quite wide enough. Let's look here. Oh, not let, let's not look on this one. Oh, we can do anything. But that's all right. Um, I think, yeah, probably what had happened there, Alex has come in a little bit shallow. Uh, as Ben then has accelerated, he's sort of cut across the line, maybe a bit of contact on that rear wheel. See if I can see anything on the uh, on the cars here, but don't seem to have. Can't see anything. But a uh, bit of a shame there for Alex. He'll be pretty gutted on that one. But, hey, at least he uh, got to get a battle in. Be good to shake those cobwebs off. Has yeah, been a little I'm while. Sure, uh, we're obviously, we expect him to go through, but he'd be a uh, big thanks, of course, to Jay's Racing Talk Performance Tire Owl. That's a little two litre. It's a F20 C four cylinder, the smallest one. Is there any damage that we can see on that car? Uh, it'll be the other side if, if there is any. I mean, it would be heartbreak if there was any damage to these cars because they're always immaculate, aren't they? All right, let's have a look and see who takes the win. Ben Jenkins takes the win. And it'll be. Uh, Stephen McIver, let's have a chat to him. Okay, so Alex Pillier lost his, uh, his wheel, gave you a bit of a bump, but you threw up against ooh, Sean Potros in this round. Yeah, bring it on. We had, the, we had this last year. Let's, um, let's have a rego in the, uh, in the dry and let's, uh, let's have a good battle. Sean is a, is a talent qualified P1, but uh, yeah, it's anyone's game today in the dry, Steve. How good is it being in the dry after yesterday? Yeah, it's definitely great. It's a bit more consistent. And um, hats off to Alex Pillier, you know, his first battle. Even though he smashed into me, no hard feelings, all good. We've all done that. All right, go get it, buddy. All right, yeah. Cheers, guys. <laughs> oh, that's a cracker. You've no, been smashed in, didn't you? <laughs> He's definitely a little bit like, you better not broken any of my car. You scratched my car. Nah, good battle there. Obviously, living learn. Yeah, oh, they live and learn on those sorts of things. Alex jumping into the to the big big, big, uh, big event here with these guys, trying to go as hard as he can. And yeah, just carried a little bit too much speed. I think uh, probably didn't uh, anticipate Ben slowing let's, let's down as much. Let's have another look here. So you watch here, Ben's on the throttle, accelerating, bang. Handbrake, yeah, now bang, that's the it there, eh? Was yep. it? Yeah, a little bit of contact. Yeah, wheel just done. Is it even though he hit me? Right there. Ben, right you just drove straight wheel. through, you just push forward. Blame Ben. <laughs> they can't, yeah. blame, they can't blame the lead. Got to learn off that one. Obviously came up a little bit shallow on the chase there. Sort of had, uh, you know, blocked himself at, had nowhere to go. And uh, yeah, created the contact. So a good win there. Ben will be pumped. Up against Sean Potros, that, that, that will be a good battle. Hopefully he keeps a uh, nice, cool head on that and uh, can drive well. Well, on screen at the moment is the RHP Reed and Harrison Performance S15 of Alex Stocky Griffin, one of two barra-powered machines out there on the grid, S15. And he's going up against the beautiful, vitalized Frankenstein monster out of the Waikato hashtag because Jace... Brown, Jace Brown behind the wheel. He had um, a, uh, the son of a, of a Formula One champ, a Formula One driver, and uh, Charlie Verts yesterday in the passenger seat of uh, Jace Brown's car got out. Absolutely loved it. 
Oh, I seen that video. It put a smile on my face to see these young fellas that How excited that do a lot of driving. Uh, very, very talented young drivers to just step out and be like, "Wow, the, these boys have talent." It's different what we do. Well, what what so, I did. So, uh, so Charlie, who sat in there, he's the son of Alex Wirtz, who was a Formula One driver from about ninety six to two thousand and five. Raced for Benetton, Williams, and McLaren. Um, oh, you're right into your F1. I know you are. I've watched every single one of his father's races because I would, well, I've watched every race from 1994 to 2010, apart from one, and I think in 98, which nobody had on TV. What happened in 2010? <laughs> Gave up. <laughs> Probably got married or but something. But here we go here, Steve, the second battle of the uh, 20th anniversary oh. season. Chase Brown leading out. Alex Griffin throwing a massive opposite uh, drift as he initiates. But here we go, coming up over the hill, and he's back on the farm uh, where he is comfortable. <laughs> really, uh, really got a little bit loose nailed on the it, dirt. Absolutely. I mean, he tried to back it in from yesterday and then uh, decided he's like, hey, I'm a farmer, I drive a tractor, let's get to the grass. Now, and, and this is a hard one to get in everyone's head. It took me a, a fair while, but let's check out the uh, Repco replay here. Come on, guys, it's two turns. Got to calm down. Look, bang, too much angle there. Put him right off. Lost a lot of drive. So look how shallow it is through here. Therefore, he pushed a lot of angle right wide. Transition and smoke up. And then also, essentially, pushes out too wide. He, he uh, needed to hold on to it sw slightly longer or switch well, earlier. Because he, because he threw so much angle at the mm. first part, lost a lot of drive. Ah, so therefore, yes. the next part of the section came in there a little bit shallow, a little bit slower, transitioned a little bit earlier. Should have held it, but got a little bit caught up in the smoke. It's a hard one that uh, can happen to anyone out there, Steve, very quickly. His wife, Andrea, he's uh, got married in the uh, off-season. We'll be saying, you're sleeping on the couch, boy. That was your mistake. Live and learn, mate. Live and learn. But yeah, you can see through here, pushed a little bit wide, transition. Thought he was in the right spot, and uh, off he went. It sort of gives you a good look from the Inspire You drone as he goes flies over. The elevation change is coming through. It's only a 12 second lap, as you've mentioned, but uh, there's a lot to do. Only two corners, but oh, what's that? Is it a cloud on the screen? You can't see. Oh, sorry. No, I don't know right. what you're going on about. Oh, there is just there. As you come up over that hill, you can't see where you're heading to. So knowing that you've got to get the, the nose of the car right on that inner cliff, that will line you up for the, the rest part, the rest of the uh, section is real critical. So we transition just way too early, way too close on the inside. But let's see how uh, Alex leads out here and Jace Brown uh, chases. Look at the speed that Stocky just threw on that first section. Right up on the inside there, hugging right around the corner. Jace Brown coming back at him, knows he's got a 10-0 advantage. Alex doing a very nice lead there. A little bit of a wobble as he came to the last part of the section, but uh, wow, he was up and gone in that one. Have you, have you always, uh, I mean, as a two-times champion, Cole, do you have a preference to start up first? Do you always want to lead, or do you... Does it depend yeah, on the person? Always, always. always. It was something that, uh, you know, Repco replay here. Jace Brown, wheel spinning massively off the line. That horsepower definitely didn't give him, a, him an advantage in that section. But uh, kind of caught back up here. Pushed a little wide here. Shortcut this section. Got the nose right up on that inner clip here. But then through this last part here, didn't quite get out to that outside zone. But trying to play catch up in that section. Jace Brown, he's got a Valvoline on the side on the guards. Changed the Valvoline oil. One of the issues he had last year, they've actually put down to oil. Changed the Valvoline oil and uh, came back and said that it's absolutely incredible talking to Rod and the team from Valvoline New Zealand saying thank you. You've actually changed the way my car is able to actually deliver power. Wow, that's that's good to hear. But going back to it, Steve, uh, always would want to lead. It was something that, even though there's not a lot of points in qualifying, it is critical. You, you want to lead. You're, you're in your own zone. You want to do your own line you have the chance then just to go out do what you need to do i love saying that it's my favorite words um put down a real good line and then hey what happened to them did they make a mistake how hard do i need to push it uh that was always my game plan with um, battle time let's have one more look at uh, that oh we're having a look at So these are the two boys that are about to come up now. Yeah, this, this, is, them in this is the preview. To Look at the, the uh, squat. Look at the squat Dave Steadman's car right there. As he gets on the throttle, that whole bum of that car just sits down, grips up those tyres, 
pushes the car up that hill with a lot of pace. Well, here we go. We're going to find out. Thumbs up goes to Jace Brown. He will get the win going to the next round. Jace Brown happy with that. Certainly, certainly trying to... Yeah, it's definitely a good way to, um, you know, start the season off, get a battle. Jace Brown will be wrapped. Do you know how last year he came out with a hiss and a roar? Right into the um, last season, and then obviously sort of had a few, as you said, engine failures. But we'll, uh, we'll check this one out. All right, we've got the Napa Auto Parts Mimico Ryko 24/7 car going up against the Napa Auto Parts Mimico Ryko 24/7 car. It's the teammates. It's Adam Davies leading out Dave Stedman. Oh, this is a hard one here. Look at the little bit of understeer there on Adam Davies' car as he threw it in there. But Dave right up on the inside. A little bit sloppy from both these boys right now, but. Adam oh. pulling away, look at him, threw the car up on the top of the uh, inner clip there as he came down the hill. Wow, didn't quite get out to that outer zone. Uh, bit of a messy run by both these guys, I think, on that. Dave hasn't had a fun day. He's been pretty angry out there, and I think that Adam got as far away from us as he possibly could because Dave was definitely going to come knocking on that door. But, yeah, here we go, Repco replay. Throw it in. What's, that? What's the front understeer? See him turn in, and the car didn't want to do it. Then, bang, a lot of lock in here. Had to pull the lock out. Rotates the big lock again there as Adam Davies as he drives up over the hill. Davies is playing catch-up, jumps up over that clip. Doesn't quite get out to that outer zone where Dave did, so it's probably going to be a pretty... Uh, even though there was a bit of a gap between one another, I think a few mistakes went either way, and uh, no doubt it'll probably be pretty even on the judges' eyes, I think. And again, we see that uh, elevation change around that left-hander here at Hampton Downs, around one of the Valvoline D1NZ. That is the, uh, how many more battles have we got? On the right-hand side of the tree, this is the battle between Adam Davies and Dave Steadman. That was 15th versus 18th, not the greatest in qualifying yesterday. No, not, <clears throat> no, not at all. I talked to both these guys and uh, yeah, they're pretty disappointed in themselves. One, Adam had said he thought he had a real nice line just hesitated on getting on the throttle as he came up uh, over to the inner clip and yeah the car just had a bit of a, a cough and a splutter and that was all, all she wrote had a bit of a straight line and, and got some real poor points so see that beautiful super over here safety car I mean it's never been the slowest super it's always been the fastest until it comes to D1 NZ and parks next to mix, uh, Mitch Lana's all yeah, right let's see that. what Dave can do the power of the RB as he sets himself loose yeah, look at that. Nice. Gets on throttle. Look at the car sit down. Bang. Messy by Dave again through here. Running up over the inside clip here. Not really getting angle. Look at Adam coming right up on his door there. Set, uh, finishing off the section there. Not the cleanest run by both these boys in my eyes. I've definitely seen a, uh, a better run by either of them but if it's the first one it's the shaking off the cobwebs one Ooh. of the best things that we've got is that we know that changing judges and i know that these guys will deliberate and come a lot way with a winner let's have a look at the repco replay Cole. yeah right there dave really anticipated to just come in and clip that in a clip nearly did it probably half a meter uh, short on that and then it really gave the advantage to adam just to suck right up into that pocket Okay, watch him come up. He makes he comes Bang, through, drops the wheel off. But what it does is he comes through to switch. It actually shallows that car up. You can see a lot more angle than Adam's car. Correct. But how he had to do that is because he pushed wide as he come up over the hill. He scrubbed off a lot of speed, so he had to transition hard to get the car back to the inner clip, throwing more angle, losing that momentum. Gave Adam the advantage to really suck up in. Well, there we go. It's a, it's a tough one. It is Here a we tough go. One. See, this is, this is there was a 50-50 call I think on this first part, and both of them made a bit of a mistake. I think they're wanting to see if Adam uh, dropped the wheel as well on the inside. I don't think he did. He was just off and on that ripple. Dave's That's one of the frustrating did. things is if they're looking to see if Adam did it too. He's got to mimic the line of the car in front of him. If the car goes off, sometimes it's not his fault that he's got to go up and hit. Like, yeah, okay, he might have actually touched it with his right front tyre, but he's emulating the lead car, even if it's his teammate. Yeah, correct. There's there's a fine line, though. You want to emulate that car in front of you, but you obviously also don't want to go off track. Mm, sure. So, yep. hard one. All Both. I know is that Mimico, Napa Auto Parts, Ryko 24-7, and Dynapack are going to be happy no matter what the result. Yeah, I, I think you'll be right there. Steve, hopefully, in my eyes, it's a 
Uh, oh, I think, yeah, something's blocked up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Adam Davies gets the win there over uh, Dave Steadman. He'll be chuffed about that. Both a bit shaky out there, so... Well, if Stephen McIver's down there, I'm sure we'd love to catch up with one of those guys. Yeah, I'm coming, lads. I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here I am. There, I'm here. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, that was tough, mate. Up against your teammate. Oh. What's going on? No, I don't know. Just had a bad day at the office yesterday, and unfortunately, this is the result. So, a, few, a couple of scrappy runs from both of us. You know, the Mimico cars up against each other straight away. It's never good, but anyway, one of us advances. One and done, but there's a long way to go, and this car looks sweet. Yeah, it sounds good. Goes good. <laughs> We're on. Well done, him. <laughs> yeah, looking pretty good out there. Adam uh, would have... Feel, he will feel a lot better after that, but here we go. James McManaway now uh, leading out Michael Thorley. JDM Earthworks. Look at the thing. It's got some power, eh? Doesn't seem to really get wide on that first outer zone, and then, wow! Hits that in a clip, rotates to a lot of angle, losing a lot of speed, but another bit of a scrappy run there by both these guys. Big mistake there by um, James McManaway coming what, into that first a, section. What an ugly lead for uh, good old Engrul McManaway. <laughs> yeah, that, I don't know what's happening there. I've, I've watched the last few few passes that James has done. Watch this here on the Repco replay. Brings a lot of pace to this. Look, Thorley trying to keep up here. Look at him, goes to initiate. Just can't, just can't get out. It's like the handbrake's not working or, or something. Bang, gets on the throttle really shallow. Gets to yep. the clip shallow. Pushes really wide. Has to throw a lot of angle. Third time we've seen that. Yeah, so something's definitely not right with the car. Yeah, saw it twice in practice. Yeah, uh, hopefully here we've got another uh, Repco replay, but not the ideal lead pass here. Watch this here, James. Just not getting out to that outer clip. Michael did as well. Tucks up right up on the inside. O's well off. Throws a lot of angle. Well, let's, get in, let's get into the brain of Cole Armstrong. What is going to cause that? What sort of malfunction? What sort of mechanical issue is going to cause Well, it's that? either like he's got too much rear grip and yeah. the car's just wa not wanting to unload as he's uh, transitioning from the uh, right-hand side to the left, or there's just no handbrake. And when you grab the handbrake, it extends the car in the drift. So if he's not quite there, you've got to grab the handbrake lets the car slide a little bit more, goes a little bit wider, and he would have got out to that outer zone. We didn't see that rear wheel lock up at all. He just got back on throttle, threw the front wheels up over the uh, riffle strip. Well, second pass this time here for the uh, these two drivers. Both of these cars 180s, one's got a 180 front, the other one's got an S15 front, one's got an LS, the other one's got a, an RB30. Michael Thorley, former pro sport champion. That's about five years ago now. Let's see what he can do as he leads out. You might see it this time here. Yeah, Thorley, nice clean entry there. Same again. I don't know what's up with that of um, McManaway's car here, but Thorley really just needs to hold it together. I'd say he's got a little bit of an advantage coming up through the section, pushing nice and wide there. James giving him a bit of a gap as they come up over the hill, but probably a, a if I have to go back lead for lead, Thorley probably just did a bit better of a job uh, getting out to each of those clips, being a bit smoother, probably a little bit slower. But yeah, just something's not right with uh, James's car there as we go to the Repco replay. Here we go. Thorley initiates. Bang. Nice. Right out to the outer zone. See him grab the handbrake. Holds the car up. Nice. Gets back on throttle. Probably a little bit late there. Gets to that in a clip. Jumps the wheel up over that inside clip as well, but pushes wide to that outer zone. James, you know, sitting in the pocket, not quite nicely. Definitely a cleaner run than his lead run. Like right, that was. Uh, well, I guess it's going to come down to who made the most mistakes. Yeah, that's it, Steve. If the judges go back lead for lead, obviously we could probably see um, who made more mistakes. But the chase for chase, Thorley had a few bobbles as well. James was probably a bit cleaner. But let's just see if Thorley drops the wheel on the front here. Initiates, nice. Gets out, bang, grabs the handbrake, holds that drift, extends it just that little bit. Another grab on the handbrake. Did he run the wheel up on the inside clip there? But he just touched it. Where's George? We need that uh, that drone footage. But look at that. It's like he's trying to grab the handbrake, but that wheel's just not wanting to lock to extend the drift. And then look at him, pushes really wide here. But Thorley in behind, where was he in that chase just as well? Just pushing it wide. Both just pretty, in my eyes, a bit of a messy run there by both drivers.
Well, we'll see them line up side by side. What is the go with that? This is Nick over here and the Stephen McIver. Have you seen their shoes? There we yeah. go. Thumbs up. Michael Thorley gets the tick of approval. Yeah, I think he, he just did. We, so, Stephen, we'll go down and talk to Thorley. Obviously, a bit of a messy run from both the guys, eh? Well, let's, let's exactly ask that question. Mike, can you just drop this for me, buddy? Uh, the lads are suggesting not the greatest of runs, but you got through. I, I'm surprised, I'm honest. Um, the cars, I don't know, I need to do some setup changes, though. But uh, we're through, so let's set, set it up and go back out there. So what do you think you need to change? Uh, we need some more grip on the side. I come in and it just floats off. So I don't know, we'll go back, have a look at it and see what we can do. I think we got... No, we got Tro Troy Jenkins next. Troy, sweet. So he's a good driver, let's go. <laughs> go get him. Thank you. All right, Cole Armstrong, you know I'm going to ask, what does that mean? Well, so what's his... He, and when he's off throttle, the car's floating, it's unloading. It's, uh, it's got no bite. And what you can get with that, and I might be wrong, someone will probably say, what is he's on about? He doesn't know what he's talking about. I would say if he had some more um, tail in in his rear wheels, his rear wheels off acceleration would bite in a little bit more. As he gets on throttle as well, they would then grip a whole heap more. But what it's doing is it, it's making him hesitate because he's like, whoa, I've got to hold it, I've got to wait, I've got to wait. So, uh, yeah, that's hopefully what it probably is there, Steve. All right, well, uh, more D1NZ action straight after the break. Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship round number one here Hampton Downs part of the 67th running of the New Zealand Grand Prix Kyle Armstrong we're certainly seeing a lot of action out on track yeah we are Steve uh, boys haven't probably done as much driving as I'd like to uh, I, easy to say when I'm sitting up here in the commentators box but um, yeah definitely a few uh, quite shabby runs in my eyes so hopefully they've now got that out of the system they can start to feel a little bit more comfortable, uh, just like Michael was saying. They actually don't get a lot of uh, laps here, especially being a part of such a big um, series, a lot of different uh, categories going on. So not, not much seat time for the boys to really set the cars up. So now's the time they do it in the battles. Well, if you've been tuning in, eight categories today of racing, plus the D1 NZ Pros. Really, eight? I think it was eight. Wow. So John, can you name them? All right, well, this, uh, that is the section that we will see New Zealand's best drifters head up and over the hill. It's two turns, but it's very tricky out there. First round two, Stephen. Uh, pretty stoked to uh, be back, as we said. 20th year here, D1NZ. I did it for 14, then I bowed out. It's Fanger. What a trooper. 20 years. Cole Armstrong, he's coming back to get number three. <laughs> number three. Maybe when Theo's like 10 and then he can be beside me. So we'll see how that goes. Welcome back to the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. This is round number one from Hampton Downs. Steve Daniel joined by Cole Armstrong. The top 24 is done. It's now the 16. Yeah, quick as that. Uh, we're on to the next set, which is it was good. We had the top 24. Uh, everyone got to have a bit of a battle, have some time on the track. As we talked about, uh, we're here part of a massive series. So, uh, yeah, top 16 battles up. Here goes our first battle, Sean Potros, Ben Jenkins, Whew, that's going to be a good one. Connor O'Halligan uh, versus Kurt Blackie, Sam West, Jason Farron, oh no, Jace Brown actually, I'll tell, you, tell a lie, Taylor James, Adam Camplin. 
Let's have a look inside of the tree. Let's have a look at the top, let's have a look at the top 16 tree. So as uh, we just seen that Sean Potros versus Ben Jenkins. I think we go further down. Fanga Dan going up against Adam Davies, Scotty D versus Mitch Lana, Troy Jenkins and Michael Thorley, Cody Pullenbury and Jason Farron. That is the top 16 for the round one of 2023. Hampton Downs, here we go. There's going to be some interesting battles here, St uh, Steve. Quite looking forward to see uh, Fanger and Adam. Sam West, Jace Brown, new guys. Yeah. Well, new guy, sorry. New guy, yeah. Sam West driving really well. I've actually had a battle against him uh, back in Taupo and he smoked me, so... <laughs> I have to say, he's a good peddler. Young Sammy, well. stepped up. Well, we've got the elite performance link ECU Smith Industries top two New Zealand Stephen sold custom car on the line Stock Street. He's uh, the man who led qualifying pan head qualifying yesterday. Sits in the top spot in qualifying, going up against Ben Jenkins in the Carter's tyres. Puka Koei, North Shore Toyota Parts 2JZ powered GT86. Let's see what Benny does here. Sean leading out. Is Ben going to try and get on his door like an animal, or is he going to play sensible? and give a little bit of room and just sit in the pocket. Here we go, big initiation there by Sean, massive angle. On throttle really early, look, been trying to come back, claw back, a little bit of a bobble there by Sean in the lead with a lot of angle. Look at him holding massive angle up and over the hill there, but Ben Jenkins doing a nice that job nice. just sitting in the back, a little bit of room. That was what I call a bit of smart driving there. Nothing too chaotic, nothing too crazy. But as I say, good lead there by uh, Sean, real talented driver. That's why I had to say it. Here we go, Repco replay. Look at this animal taking off, bang, big initiation. Look at that car, rotate the angle, bang, on throttle so early. Good drive through that centre section, but had to hesitate for a moment. Gave Ben a, uh, a real chance to get up in that pocket, as, he, uh, as you can see right there. Doing a good job there, Steve. Solid drive. Just a nice lead, but showing why, I mean, this is a former Pro Small Sport champion. Small corrections there, but watch here. Been nice, tucked up on the inside here. Sean does push a little bit wide. Had to rotate a lot of angle. Just gave Ben the opportunity to come back into that pocket. But it looks beautiful out there, doesn't it? Well, look at the green. You would have known that we've had like 50 days of rain. <laughs> it's only rained in uh, twice over summer this year. Once for 31 days, the other for 47. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good to see that blue sky, man. Armstrong Plumbing, we haven't done much work this uh, this summer. It's been crazy out there with the rain holding us back big time, but uh, hopefully we'll start to kick off. Well, it's a uh, return run time for these two drivers. It's Ben Jenkins' turn to jump into the uh, lead position. Yeah, it is. I actually might have mixed the boys up. Normally I was just thinking about it. You probably did start from the left-hand side, but no, nah, I think it's right. They're doing well. Ben will take off. Let's see how Sean goes here. Is he going to leave a gap or is he going to be an animal right on that door there of Ben Jenkins? Transitions real early. Really shallow there, but look at the proximity. If Ben does a nice line up this hill, he should drive away. Look at that transition by Sean. Jumping right in the pocket. What a drive here. Wow. That was sensational. That was smooth. That was a smooth operator right there. Waited, waited, got back on the throttle, held the car really nicely into that pocket. That's what, I mean, that's the thing, we'll be watching on the replay, how aggressive he was to start, but just knew to drag the car on. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, one. a lot shallower. Definitely held his line, held his line, but waited, waited, yep. waited, tucked in, now on throttle. Nearly run that wheel over there, but very nice line there by Ben. Given the opportunity for Sean. Look at him, nice and wide, holding the handbrake, bang, on throttle, but Sean did well to really wait. Transitions now, bang, right up in that pocket, just pushed, anticipated. No left foot brake, didn't see any brake lights come on there, so really evenly matched uh, cars there with uh, drive. That was, a, that was a good battle, Steve. That got me sitting up in my seat. That chase battle. Good lead, though. Good lead. Have to say, Benny boy. Good, good lead. lead. Said you can't have a great chase without a great lead. Yeah, I did, Steve. And uh, that was it. You. That was <laughs> it right there. Well, this, of course, will be for a spot. The first spot on the top eight. Who's it going to be? Sean Potros versus Ben Jenkins. After that, we've got a Connor Halligan going up against Kurt Blackie. Just waiting for these cars to tour around. If we go back to the replays, hopefully they do lead for lead. 
So Sean did obviously in his lead a lot more aggression into the first section, big angle on throttle early. Ben, technical, nice, smooth. Gave Sean the chance to get the proximity. Then you go back to Ben chasing. Just a little bit more of a gap. That's all I could really see on this. Both very smooth. Sean probably did a bit more of a uh, bobble coming up the hill uh, with rotating more angle, but it gave Ben the chance to really get up in that pocket. And there we go. Let's go down and talk to Sean Potros with Steve McIver. You know, Sean, sometimes in your career, you have those moments where you go, everything was just right. That chase was special. Yeah, no, that was... Um a wicked um, lead run by Ben to put on a wicked chase like that. Um, I don't think it would get any better than that, eh? <laughs> mate, mate, the judges have been asking for aggression. Your lead run was pretty aggressive as well. Um, yeah, just the little things are changing. We just dropped tyre pressures um, just then to get a little bit more hooked up and it's definitely playing its part. The car's working its ass off now, so... As much as this can be stop-start because you would wait, wait the other battles, are you feeling now some sort of momentum? Um, yeah, yeah, the momentum's there, the fast entry and then you got a nice um, inside clip and when you switch up over the hill, you just fourth gear, foot flat, right to the end I guess, yeah. Well done mate, into the top eight. Oh, great. Shall I just whip over quickly, have a quick talk to, to Ben. Hey buddy, uh, hell of a start but he was just on. Yeah, exactly. And if you're watching at home, this is what you want to see. Two close cars, a big close battle to start the top 16 in the show. So congrats to Sean. You know, he qualified P1 for a reason, but I had to stick it to him and uh, I just got beaten at the end of the day. So, but happy there. I hope the rest of people would enjoy the show. It's going to be one hell of an afternoon. Good work, bud. Cheers, guys. Yeah, you said it there, uh, Ben. What a battle that was between him and Sean. That's what we want to see. This is the second, ba first battle? First battle of the top 16. First and it got battle me, of the top 16. Got me sitting up in my seat. Like, that's what we want. Like, Sean really put the pressure on. Ben drove real well as well. Got right up into that pocket, but just a, a little bit less uh, aggression compared to compared to Sean there. So, that's, how, that's all she wrote uh, for Ben this afternoon. But good way to start the season. Cars looking good. Feeling good. Don't scratch um, And what you know, all, all you can ask for, they'll be putting it on the trailer in one piece, good to go. Well, issues for Connor Halligan. He is called for a five minute. That's going to push that battle between himself and Kurt Blackie out a little bit. I assume that they're going to bring in a battle between uh, Sam West and uh, Jace Brown. But we'll see what's happening with the JOB. Jason Obers Builders, McKinstry Roofing, 1.5 JZ S14 out of tow for called for a five minutes. So uh, Kenny Ruddle will be straight down there into the pits. We'll see what's going on. Uh, I'm sure if we're going to send our cameras down there, it's a bit of a hike. So you're probably right there, Steve, but oh, it's just putting it on this afternoon. I'm stoked. Really uh, letting the letting the guys out there so have some fun. We need to talk to Tony Quinn and get them so they, they come around the through the dipper and we'll get a little piece just a bit of a dog leg so that we can go up and drift that section there while we'll think about that why don't we head towards a break we'll see you shortly for the rest of the top 16. Well, it's a Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Hampton down, round number one. Great crowd here coming along for this uh, for the 67th New Zealand Grand Prix. And, of course, the uh, round number one of the D1NZ. 20th year. 20th year. Don't forget that, Steve. 20 years. Big 14 year. for you. Fang it on the most. Has to have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, you said 20 years. It's been here so since day one. Done day. Wow. Yeah, day one, mate. But what we've got here, a whole lot of new blood, fresh blood. Sam West out there, scrubbing the tyres up. Ready to go. We've got uh, Jace Brown as well, getting ready to warm those tyres up. But yeah, look, what's going on here? I'd say if the car's up like that, so the rules behind it, safety first. Cars can be put on axle stands. No one, the time doesn't start until they touch the car. Well, they're down with Kenny. Right I'd say snap the axle. Well, I'm just, no, I'm looking, I'm... See, so here we go. No one's touched the car yet. Go, go, bang. And they're on. So they'll drop the wheels off, 
drop a wheel off. I bet you snap the an actual how much you want to bet? Ten bucks? Oh, hang on. I don't know if I've got my wallet on me. Yeah, ten bucks. Yeah, look, because he's got a 14 underneath there. He's under, underneath his six bolt. Look, now I'm do that 32 mil on the outside there. Can we do five bucks? Yeah, we can do five bucks. Okay. What are, you, what are you betting? See, look, the new axle's lying there, ready to go. Ah, ha, I won. Yeah. Oh. I'll hold Pass it, it there. Pass yeah. it there. I want to do it on camera so I can prove that I paid you. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that. Eh? He snapped Axel. Not what he wants there. We'll jump what? down for Stephen MacGyver. What's going on there, mate? Am well, I correct? Ask Connor exactly what's going on. What exactly is going on? <laughs> well, what's going on? Uh, I tried to get too greedy in the scrub box and grab second gear and it just blew the axles. So, not sure. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know. Obviously, he didn't like it. So, yeah, here we are trying to trying to change an axle before the first pro battle. It's not really ideal, but... How confident are you of the boys getting it done? You've got uh, four minutes and counting. I'm confident. I think so. It's unfortunately on the side where the exhaust is on, so that's got to come off come off and go back on as well. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Positive vibes, buddy. Positive vibes. <laughs> Hopefully. Fingers crossed. What a way to... Uh... What a way to start your first battle, snap an axle, getting too greedy out there. I love it. I love it. And that's what happens, going from a uh, 235 radial tyre up to a 265 semi-slick tyre. A lot more uh, lot more strain on the gear, Steve, out there. And as you can see, there's the axle lying on the ground. Now, these aren't, that there's not brand new axle, you know? That's probably 30 years old. <laughs> Six-bolt GDR or five-bolt GDR uh, or GDS axle, so... Oh, here we go. Sam West leading out. Jace Brown here. Steve, run us through this battle, mate. Well, Sam West out of Tauranga. New to pro, but certainly not new to drifting in the RHP Reed and Harrison Performance 180. And that's a big, speedy run as he comes up, heads up over the hill. Needs to bring the nose down. He's doing a good job of that. Not too much angle, but sets it up nicely. And look at the fight back by Jace Brown. Yeah, he missed that inner clip as he came up over the hill there, Steve. So as he came through, came through beautiful on throttle, but pushed a little wide. Had to transition the car with a lot of angle. Snap back, missed that inner clip as he came up over the hill. Was probably a half a car length off that. So not the best uh, line here as, a, as we'll go back to the Repco replay. Super entry, bang. On throttle, hear that, bang, heavy. Pushes wide here, throws some more angle, transitions. Yeah. Missed that inner clip. Look at him. Half a car length, if not more, yeah, allows absolutely. Jace Brown to catch back up. So not the best uh, final part of that for Sam West. Sam West qualified fourth yesterday. Great run by him. Moving up from Pro Sport. Oh, and doing a good job too. Look, up against that uh, Frankenstein monster there and sort of pulling away. I guess they didn't have Pro Sport with you and Fanger and... Yes, they did. Mate. I just stepped. I just I skipped like, that. Heck no. I was lucky, and back then they had... Um, the Still Volca series. One Way back 42 then. to go. And it Wheels like, going back on. Man, speed and efficiency. Yeah, here we go. So Sam West, big initiation here. Bang, gets nice and wide. Did he drop a wheel? No, he didn't. Perfect. Tucks right up on the inside. Real nice there. Did Jace Brown drop a wheel? Don't think so, but Sam, very wide as he comes up over the hill here. Allowing Jace Brown to catch back up. That, that car's got some pace, eh? Going once again from a 235 to the big 26 semi. So the 235 is, of course, of what the these cars like. What Connor? Wow. Oh, one minute to go. Doesn't look like they're going to get it done. I don't, like to, boys. I don't like to say it, but like if Avon was there or Andy and Connie. Nah, look, he's putting his helmet on. He believes. Look, yeah, it's the thing. Do it up. Yeah, they're ready to go. I know it can be done. The boys have done it many a time if they're out there watching. Andrew Conrad, Avon, Maz as well, maybe Hugh, they'll be watching. Love the drifting. Second half of the battle, here we go. Oh, Jace Brown, big initiation. He's going to get marked down massively for doing that. Not what the judges want to see. Oh, a bit of an understeer there by uh, Sam West as he comes through for that inner clip. Jace pushing up nice and wide. Driving away from Sam West. Bit of a mistake there. But are the, I want to know. Now, something, Steve, I wasn't obviously, I was very busy yesterday. Yep. Now, were the judges penalising the drivers for initiating the wrong Six, way five, as you came into the drift section? Four, three, out. 
Okay, wow. Super McIver, what's going on down there? Looks like he's out. She's all over Red Rover. They went very, very, very... Well, hang on. You, they're saying they're clear. Kenny, we clear? Bring Kenny Ruddle in. Let's talk. We're good. We're good. Okay. Talk to we're Kenny good. Ruddle. What's, what's going good. on? Where's the decision being made? All right. Come on, boys and girls. Give me a round of applause. That's what we're about. So I think... How's that feel? That was close. Oh, massive thanks to the boys for getting that done. That's Get out there. Awesome. Woo. So I think that the ruling was because it's on the safety factor, they had the jack under the car with that second to go. Yep. So all they were doing is taking the safety factor out, which is removing the axle stands to put the car on the ground. Well, one man that certainly knows a thing or two about drifting is uh, Kenny Ruddle, and he has taken up a different role this, this year, basically uh, making decisions like that. And I think he just said, no, he's going through. Yeah, so, so it is on the uh, fact of the car was finished, there weren't tools being used on it, it just needed to be lowered to the ground, and uh, away he went. So really good to see. Connell will you be know, wrapped. You know who said, you heard who said, out, nah, you're out. That was Steve McLeod. Oh, unbelievable. Oh. See, he doesn't know the rules, eh? <laughs> really needs to learn in the off-season what the rules are. No way. I've been, I've been doing this for hold 10 up, years and I haven't learned a thing. Hold up. What did I just hear? A bi-lap. That can't be a bi-lap if Conor O'Halligan, he's made it. He should be sitting right next to uh, Kurt Blackie What's here. What's going so on here? We might have a little bit of a, oh uh, a mix-up here, I think. But here we go. Watch Kurt Blackie out there. Holy Toledo. And wow, that's, that's why lucky he got to do a bi-run because that was two wheels over. So I think there's been a bit of communication uh, malfunction there because I thought Connor uh, got his five minutes done and was able to uh, get out on track. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will uh, inform you what's uh, going to happen there very soon. Well, our next driver out on track is Adam Camplin. Adam Camplin. Kurt Mackey was definitely up against. Yeah. And who we got now? Well, now we've got Taylor, Taylor James, James is there. meant to be up against Jace Brown. Uh, oh no, 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 I'm wrong. It's your Camplin handwriting. Is, is my I heart. can't read your handwriting. Nah, oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> it's Taylor James. Adam Camplin. My bad. Don't worry about that, guys. Missed that first one. It's all about my handwriting. I apologise if anyone's seen my <laughs> handwriting. They'll be... There's a bonus this. Most people know my handwriting's immaculate, which they, they're not going to believe you. This looks terrible, but yeah, I think it's always I immaculate. Know. Can we update this? I'm getting caught up. I'm getting... Let me write it. <laughs> All right, well, we've got two amazing drivers out there on track. Taylor James in the ProWare Valino tyres, RB34 powered Nissan S15 Central Equipment. Taylor James, the 187, he's going up against Adam Campling in the Roofing Industries Unlimited Custom Parts Master 2JZ powered Mazda FCRX7. Come on. Have we had a winner between Sam West and Jace Brown? Mm. No, they haven't gone in there, eh? Kurt Blackie, Connor, don't know what happened there. That was a mix-up. Here we go. Here we go, Taylor James. Watch this thing squat. You want to see a car that's got a lot of grip and he's got some new tyres that have got super grip? Here it is here. Watch the oh, front wow. wheel lift here. As he gets on throttle, real nice. Oh, bit of contact there. Bit of contact there uh, by Adam Camplin coming into the back rear quarter of Taylor James' car. Woo! Yeah, you know what? That's all we like to see. Top 16, baby. Good on Adam Camplin. I think he's gone. Hang on, I'm going up against the thing with the most amount of grip out there right now. I've got to be right on the door. Yeah, there's definitely a, a good, good bit of contact there, but obviously not what you want to see, brother. You can probably look at taking off his. Uh, so you can see he's just trying to feel the car out on his outlap. Let's have a look at the replay. So good entry there by uh, Taylor. Very shallow there by Adam. Very shallow. Had nowhere to go. Coming right in the midline, contacted Taylor. Taylor did well not to obviously uh, throw a spin and um, hold it together for the for the final of that lap. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna go down. Oh, look at that! Bang! Took the side skirt off. Brand new car. Dang! You gotta hate that. But I think we're gonna go down to uh, Steve McIver on on the ground there. Yeah, we what's are going on the ground, on. And, if you, and if you keep talking about me like that, you'll be on the ground, okay? I'm told he was clear. I was told he was clear. Uh, no, Sam West, Jace Brown, one more time. Just to clarify, one more time for Sam West and Jace Brown. There's my juicy titbit, Cole. 
That's it. <laughs> Thanks for that there, Stephen. I love it. Good man. Oh, also, we've got one more time coming there. Good to see you slowly learning, mate. It's, uh, it's awesome for the sports progression. I mean, it's so tough being me and Stephen McIver. You know, people like us have got away with saying whatever the heck we've liked for, in my case, a decade, and then you jump into commentary, and this is your, is your third season, whatever, um, and you just constantly pull me up. You're like, Steve, you've got that wrong for seven years. Time to get it right. <laughs> that's it. That's, uh, we're here for uh, critical information for the viewers out there. They're wanting to see a show, and also when there's sometimes that uh, real weird call. Hopefully I'm there to, to clarify it so everyone has a... Good bit of understanding, but no doubt here will be a 10-0 advantage to Taylor James. Um, he will no doubt be um, taking it a little bit easier out there, I think. Getting the feel of that car. I had a, had a little quick talk to him about yep. these new tyres. What are they, Steve? Uh, they are Valinos. They come from a wonderful man, Mr. Thompson. Yeah, Carl Thompson. So another bloke uh, who is Polish. He drives on them. Yeah. No. You don't know him? No. Oh. Oh, uh, Peter. Peter uh, Fisik. Yep, he drives on them. And wow, that car is so fast. And look at this team. Such a uh, Kiwi ute out there. The Toyota Hilux doing the work. Don't you bring that water on my track. All right, where's the contact? Let's see what happened there. Let's Real shallow here. Through. Nowhere to go. Pop. Knock, knock. Who's there? I am Adam Camplin. Yeah, look, there's the side skirt on the ground. Whose side oh, skirt was it? His Taylor's. Or, oh, it's Taylor's. Yeah, because he hit him. Uh, oh, he's going to have to shoot down to Big Brown Industries and get some work done. Yeah, you love that after the first. Is that his first battle? It is I don't too. know. I know that by mentioning Big Brown Industries, Jerry just said, OK, I'll do it for free since you got me some TV airtime. So there we go. You're welcome, Taylor. Big Brown Industries. <laughs> yeah, look at, look, at the, look at the debris that's been dragged across the front of the track by the boys uh, hitting that inside clip. A lot of debris just being dragged over the front. Makes it a bit slippery out there. And then once again, not ideal for the lads sitting on the line here. The tyres, yes, they will be at temp, but they can slow down very, very quickly out there. Um, Cole, I want to talk about the heat that we've got at the moment. Massive humidity out there. It's very, very warm. What does that do to the motor when it basically comes to sucking air? We're just going to go to the replay here, Steve. <laughs> but with... With the uh, with with the heat, I think in the motor it doesn't create as much boost. Yep. Um, the air is maybe denser. Uh, if if I might be right on this one, it might be better for the motors. It might not be. Actually, I don't really know, Steve. You I know, don't like, so I have a tuner because yeah, right. and his, his name's either Ross Honor at Top Tune or uh, you know Daryl Chicken or Daryl Turk Air Fine Turbo. Turbo. You know those guys. You know they're wizards for a reason. They and know what they're uh, up to. I know. Put the pedal and down. If I could choose either of those, I'd. Go to Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only trying to share it out, so we've got yeah, to say good man. Developments. Just trying to All share the very, love. very, very clever tuners out there, uh, able to manipulate these motors to put out some awesome horsepower and be very reliable. Like you were saying, it's a hot, muggy day today, right now. And I guarantee you, those cars are sitting at 85 degrees, nice and cool, ready to go. Uh, I know a Taylor's car has got a big dry sump system, so well, it's for oiling. So probably had 13 or 14 litres of oil in there with these um, RB motors. They like to pump a lot of oil around and usually can create a bit of a havoc with it. So you dry something motor which therefore sucks the, the oil out of the motor and pumps it all in but via a big pump that's better than the actual standard pump. Yeah, of course. Uh, something that we're starting to see a lot of is the radiators, uh, very sort of speedway saloon, super saloon style, getting mounted in the back of the cars as mm, well. Mm. So I'm not convinced on that. I am not a convinced person on the, the uh, rear mount of the radiator. I more think it is for weight balance. Well, yeah, 57% than... where rear weight has always been the, uh, the optimum. Uh, what? Where'd you get that from? Uh, mate when you've been around motorsport as long as I because I've been I ask questions 57% wear rate rear weight you really yeah well that's what well, I was always told who Actually, told you that um, every single person and I've ever spoken to a motorsports always it's that the stupid number oh, okay well, it's something I learned today because that, the, uh, but that you, oh, you're a drifter that's all I've got to fall back on. Now I'm like, Andrew Waite's going to be like, Steve, you've got no idea. And <laughs> you're just talking. Okay, it's a sp it's Speedway definitely. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, we'll play speedway, speedway thing. But here we go. Adam leading out, Taylor James. Let's see how Taylor's going to uh, battle with these very grippy tyres he's got on the back. 
Seems to be doing all right through this section here. Look at Adam. Oh, wow. A lot of dust as he kicks up. Hitting that oh, inner club. Oh, no. He's going to rotate. Is going to be? Whoa. Taylor got lucky there. Wow. Well, I think Adam got lucky there because he should not have rotated coming up the hill like that. Well, Taylor got lucky because he didn't hit him. That's skill. <laughs> um, Phase of action. Oh, taking the cone somewhere. Oh, well, there's a fine. Yeah. Brother. Brother. Not the ideal first battle. Oh. Let's go to the Repco replay Okay, what's here. he done? Which one? Not this one. No, no, no not that it's one. It's the inner clip coming up over the hill. So initiates here. Right, nice and smooth here. Bang. Gets on throttle here. A lot of throttle with a lot of lock. Had to pull the lock out. That Tra one. Wow. Oh, he dragged it backwards into the front guard. Yeah. I mean, I'm not laughing. To I'm transition laughing. like that is... Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an odd one to, to make the car rotate so quickly coming up the hill. Uh, you just have to obviously dial on a lot of angle. I've never, I don't think I've ever driven a, an RX-7 in Series 5, so maybe a bit of a different thing. And, you know, that might be the 57% thing you're on about. I'm pretty sure that has to be it. All right, well, uh, what have we got? Oh, okay, this is the actual battle that we were supposed to have seen between the uh, Wolfie. Colab Digital inside. New sponsors for... Uh, for Kurt Blackie. Yeah, and he's going to be led out by uh, Connor Halligan and the J-O-B Builders uh, S14. 1.5 Jay-Z under the bonnet. He said, Steve, you can call it a 2J, I said, but it isn't. Oh, that's harsh on your 2J fans. Well, he told me. It's Jay-Z still. Well, I'm good to see. It's good to see out here the battle up again between these two lads. Obviously, yeah, there's a bit of a mix-up. <coughs> Someone got sent out a little bit early, a little bit late. And we're now up here. What battle are we up to, Steve? That oh, we battle. had an OMT right here. Let me just keep... Oh, you've already written it. Good work. You're welcome. Yep. So we're actually on battle number two. We've had battle number three and four, but we've got an OMT. Oh, they're just... Well, they can't put the cone back. The cone's Yeah, they gone. need to know where the inner clip is. Well, the cone's sitting there are probably up around the dipper now. Oh, it's just on the front of his car store. That's a brand new cone, so there's... Was. No issues for the boys not to see that. Let's go now and trade me shortly. Well, here we go. One, two, three. Are they getting set to go? Steve, run me through this awesome battle that's about to happen here with Kurt Blackie up against Connor. Connor Halligan. Well, off he goes. Bootlet starting to fly for Connor Halligan. Halligan, last year's Pro Sport champion. He brings the nose down to the car just off his line. No. But oh, can... smooth by Kurt Blackie. I'm loving it. A little, oh, little why'd I have to say something? A little bit of you. a bobble. A little bit of a bobble at the end, but real, real good proximity there by Kurt. I love oh, he it. He got it back, didn't he? He did. Smooth through the entry. Connor, bit of a hesitation. Did he, he hesitated a little bit or just had some understeer, ah, you think? Connor was perfect. Let's have a look at the Repco replay. Yeah, just didn't want to get out there, but nice entry there, nice and wide. Kurt giving me a little bit of a gap. Nice line there by Kurt as he comes up the hill, and that's how he gained that proximity. Look at that, just sitting in the pocket there. Little bit of a bobble there by Kurt. Well, he bobbled just before he switched through the left-hander as he came through that second. So you watch him here. That was smooth, Steve. Real smooth. A little bit of a bobble through there, but I think the... Did you, can you bail out as the chase car once you get to that outer clip or something like that? I think you got to go across the line. Yeah, you got to go across the line. So here we go, though. Taylor James gets the win. Stephen, how is that man feeling down there? Oh, I'd suggest with new Villino tyres, he's pretty handy. Yeah, they're good. Um, it's hard in a chase like that, like having the extra grip there. But um, yeah, I sort of seen Adam switch real aggressively and sort of thought myself it's probably going to be a spin. So I kept it a bit wide and yeah, luckily paid off. But yeah, great driver, Adam. And it's good to see him up in the pro class with us all. Well done, buddy. We'll just whip over Tony, go around this way to have a quick chat to Adam Campbell, who stepped up this year. Uh, and I suppose, Adam, this, uh, this how, you're going to find out how tough it's going to be this year, right? Yeah, holy hell. I knew I had to push against Tay. Um, he's probably one of the fastest and most gripped up cars out there. So I tried to give it to him on that kind of first kind of uh, chase, but um, didn't quite have it and pumped into him and then put it all on the wall for um, the second part, uh, part of the battle and uh, just overcooked it. So a bit of pressure. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back next Good week. to have you in D1, bud. Cheers, mate. 
Yeah, good driving by the uh, newcomer there. But here we go, Kurt Blackie leading out now. Connor, as they come into the second part of this battle. Nice initiation there by Kurt. Nice and smooth ride out to that outside zone. Look, Connor right up on the inside there. Kurt shutting the car down. No! Giving the battle away. What has gone on here? Connor just rolling out for the last part of that section. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Great pass, though. I haven't, I haven't seen a pass that good since you did it to Brucey a few years ago at the same place. Nah, different. Remember, oh, we were at the other track. Still Hampton Downs. Yeah. Dang. Kurt will be very frustrated with that. Let's check out the Repco replay here. Looks nice here. All under power. Initiates nice. Rotates the car to the outside. Look at Connor right up on his door. Then Kurt just gets out of it. Connor has nowhere to go. Does really well to uh, not have any contact with that beautifully presented uh, GD86 there of Kurt Blackie. But did he flick a switch? Turn the car off. That's been done before, isn't it? It has. Yeah, Darren came out with that excuse once before. I think we know he battled me. <laughs> <laughs> Was that when you won your first or your second championship? At that point, you had two more championships than him. Nah, because he won the pro sport and then he won the first pro before I even won a pro. Oh, okay. So he, he actually two. had two. That makes him a four Before times. I even had one. Yeah, yeah. yeah one more and we'll consider you like Gasly, sorry. Yeah, no, nah, he, <laughs> he needs one more. But yeah, let's go back. Look for this replay here. Kurt, bang, just, nah, lost it. Did it pop out of gear. It'd be cool if we had the in-car, but here we go. Re uh, the one more time here of Sam West. Jace Brown, bang, Sam West throws it in. Big entry, left, Jace Brown sleeping. Taking off over the hill is Sam West. Pushing a bit wider, still a little bit messy on the entry there. Steve running over the uh, inside uh, clip there. Throwing a bit of dirt on the track. Sam West won his very first uh, Pro Sport Championship last year in Topol, his first round win in his first round. Um, hey, Reed and Harrison, RHP Performance Machine. Uh, of course, Jace Brown, he won, he won his uh, first Pro round in Topol last year as well. Let's have a look at the Repco replay, these two guys battling out. They kind of just jinked all over the show. Yeah, Sam got on throttle real early there, run up over the inside clip there, pushed just a bit, of, a bit wider, got that inner clip a bit better. But still, yeah, a little bit messy and just left Jace behind. I just blew it. That's, yeah, Jace must not be getting much drive out of the uh, start box to be left behind like that. So, yeah, not ideal there, but uh, we, we've got a result hit. Good for... lucky. Gets the win. Wow, okay. Wow, okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. What happened that run? Um, no, it was going. It was going quite well. Um, maybe a bit, bit of difference in the in the grip levels coming today. Getting quite hot, so it's getting a little bit slicker. And um, yeah, maybe um, Connor just came in a little bit too hot, made contact, and um, yeah, kind of didn't have anywhere to go. Not the way I want to win, but um, yeah, hats off to Connor for jumping up to the pro this season. Um, bloody awesome driver, and it'd be real good to see where he goes this year. See you in top eight. Thanks, guys. All right, we, let's keep rolling. Uh, Social media is going to have a field day on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I missed that. You must have been caught in my eyes. And I missed that contact. So that, that's obviously why Kurt pulled out of that. Bit of a contact in the uh, rear side, whether or, it sna uh, whether, or not, uh, whether or not it snapped the uh, steering wheel out of his hand. You know, it's happened to people before, I've, I think, in the uh, last season. Would have been Darren and you in your battle, but you won it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Wow, OK. Yeah. So I, anyway, I that's, that. that's awesome. I, yeah, it's great for Kurt uh, on on and upwards. Yeah, great. Well done, Kurt Blackie going into the top eight. He's got uh, Sean Potros. Good battle. Good battle to see from those two. And that just shows Connor stepping up to the uh, pro, pro Series, really pushing hard. Good to see. Obviously didn't quite pay off with a bit of contact uh, against Kurt Black Blackie there. But uh, here we go with the next part here of uh, Jace Brown, Sam West. Well, here we go. The Vitor Tire 07. Jace Brown behind the wheel. Comes through a little bit smoother this time here. It's all about hitting the clips, and he's run nice and low. He's real. He drags it out, gets ready to switch. Yeah, real smooth there, Steve. Good point. Uh, look at that. Jace Brown really doing a nice line through there. Very smooth as he came through that first inner clip. Transitioned nicely uh, in the mid track to get to that 
in the clip again as he come over the rise and pushed out real nice. Sam West doing a good job. Uh, doing a good job sitting in behind. So Refco replay here. We've, we'll switch it up with Sam West leading out again. Jace Brown really got left behind on this one, but I think a big wheel drop there by Sam West. Come up over the hill quite nice. Bit of a funny transition through there, but really pulling a massive gap on Jace Brown in that lead. And here we go with Jace Brown uh, leading out Sam West here. And just, this was a smooth run here by Jace Brown. Little handbrake, slowing the car up, on throttle, nice. Look, not too many corrections as he comes up over the hill, laying the throttle down, getting to that inner clip. Sam West having to pull a little bit of angle out to try and catch back up to Jace Brown, but yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting there. De depending on the wheel drop or not a wheel drop, we couldn't see from our angle. Uh, there is a lot of debris all over the track, so Sam might have not have uh, actually got right into that inside clip there and uh, that could have just been some debris on the track. So going to be an interesting one there. Very tight battle between uh, those two those two lads. The wall banger, banger. The old sleepy dog. Somebody, somebody sort of questioned to me if, uh, I wonder if Connor will get a zero for not completing the course. But he was in the chase position. No, so no, yeah. he, he made contact. Therefore, Kurt Blackie pulled out. The contact was made by Connor in the chase. Therefore, making Kurt fall out of drift. Therefore, the battle was over then and there. So that's, I think, how I would uh, pick that one up. But here we go. Sam West, Jace Brown. Another, another tight battle between those two. A few mistakes. Wow, Sam West gets the win. Holy Toledo. Stephen, how is that yeah. young man feeling? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> Say that again, buddy. Holy hecka. Wow, that was awesome. I um, got myself in a few pickles there with a bit too much angle, but lucky I got the Redden Harrison performance suspension in there that kept me on the track, so I'm bloody pumped. Did, did you feel threatened by the big boy next door? I, I can hear his car bloody raging behind me, in front of me, but... I just stepped up from pro sport, so come to mix it up with the pros, and yeah. Well done, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Look at that. Clean entry there by Finger Dan, rolling into the section. Adam Davies doing pretty good job getting in that pocket, but look at that. Textbook run there by Finger Dan, leading out there uh, in the well, first part of that section. Well, Finger Dan's certainly showing why he is a three times New Zealand champion. Uh, Century Batches cash on New Zealand. 800 horsepower V8, new V8 coming too for the other car. So, he's there. so look, let's look have that. a look. Oh, nice and close there by Adam Davies, but had to hesitate. Get off the side a little bit. He got right in that pocket and then this year finger pulled away a little bit there in that last part. I just stepped up from pro sport, so... Here we go here. Nice yeah. smooth entry yeah. here by Finger Dan. A little bit of uh, shaky entry there from Adam. Not quite as much angle, but drives up over the hill here. Really nice. Trying to get back into that pocket. Bang and running nice and wide there. This is uh, that's that's a nice, real clean battle by both those guys. So be good to be good to jump uh, around and see the next side of uh, the battle between the both of them. I'm not going to be jumping around. I'm going to be kneeling and as if I'm opposing. Uh, you don't look too happy, mate. Oh, hey, Sam just made a phenomenal chase. So just, I looked behind me and there was quite dense smoke. Like, to come through that, he did a stellar job. But I'm just going to go over talk to the eyes above. Um, really hard when someone's on the start line like that and they're sort of idling off. It's like he's stuck in second and just going down the dairy to get some milk and bread. Like, and then he all of a sudden just lights the wick. And it's, um, it's a little bit hard to gauge that. He knows my weakness. He knows when I roll on, I just blow the tyres. But... Hey, he's, he's read the game, so I don't want to get too hung up on that. I'm just going to go have a talk to the guys. All right, buddy. Nice to see you, man, back. Yeah. Just a huge shout-out, everyone that's got us here this weekend. Massive push. And um, can I just quickly rattle through that? Valvoline, New Zealand, Vitae Tyres, STA Parts, Tire Traders, Elite Services, Waikato Locksmiths, Royal, Royal Cars, and um, everyone that's, yeah, made it happen. So, Good man. Next round. Well, a little bit of contact, maybe, uh, to cut through this one here. Yeah, look at that entry as we uh, just talking with Jace Brown there, but look at that entry by Adam Davies. He picked the game right up there. I really wanted to uh, jump in there, but...
good to hear all the uh, support that Jace Brown does have for this uh, championship this year. Yep. Okay. Now, one of the things that we see with the turbo cars is that they can basically come onto boost. So you dawdle along and off you go. What is he meaning? Is, it, is that what he's meaning or is it something different? Pretty much. So either he's saying that Sam West took off off the line, waited, waited till he got right to the peak of the power where he could get on the throttle. But hey, I'm going to jump back here. Look at this entry here by Adam Davies. Nice and wide. Look, bang it right up on there. Did they have contact? Yeah, that's what I was saying. There's a bit of contact there. Bang it down right up on the wall. Right up on the door, sorry. And uh, wow, Adam just took it on the chin, drove up up that hill, pulled a little bit of a gap. What an awesome battle by those two. Woo! Man, those are Team DSR guys. We've certainly been trying to stick it to anyone they can this weekend at uh, Fanger Dan. There's always a scout they like if they can get it. Fanger, though, talked about it. Three times champion. He's going to be the same as Gaz, making you guys, you and Darren, so much worse at the end of the season. Can't Rats. take a championship away, mate. Rats, bud. Can't take a championship away from Rats. Me. Look, the Aussies, Aussie battler. So, uh, Mitch Laren, Alana, Mitch Lana? Is, uh, he's chasing and he's confused. Ah, he's in the wrong lane. So, he's in the wrong lane. So, Scotty D's saying, <laughs> mate, switch over. <laughs> Hang on. on no, lane. no, you can't do it. It has to be run. Like, what's he saying? Like, no, you've got to swap places? Yeah, you're on the... See, Aussies, they're, they're left and right. It's different to ah, us. Slightly, yeah, okay. So, yeah. he's told him, get out of the way. Yeah. Or is he going to just leave him there and say, well, come and follow me now? No, no. Ah, there we go. It's, the, it's an Aussie thing. Their left and right is opposite to ours. Okay, here, what about if it was your fault? What do you mean? Well, you, you were asked earlier which side they're supposed to be on. Maybe they talked about it in driver's briefing. I can't remember. No, they didn't. It's, definitely like, not. it's, definitely it's not. not my fault. It's, it's, probably it's an Aussie fault. thing. It's an Aussie thing. Well, here we go. What have we got in a result for Fanger Dan versus uh, Adam Davies here? This is going to be good to go. Whoa. All right, we'll find out after this battle. Uh, we're going to go straight back down and check out what's happening with the real estate by Pauline Dinsdale. 33 Laurel, C33 Laurel of Scotty D taking on the Galore Parts Group. 2JZ Supra of Mitch Lana. Yeah, that's it, Steve. Here we go, Scotty. Big initiation there. Real wide out there. Mitch Lana doing a nice job. Tucking right up in the pocket. Doing a pretty smooth job there in that... Toyota Galore Supra. A little bit of a bobble as he came up over the hill. Scotty doing a pretty clean lead run there. Nice and wide in the old big Laurel. Wow, well, that car the, looks cool, eh? The Laurel is huge. Have you seen it next to that? Yeah, I know. And then that's like it even is. wider again. It's massive. But that's like four and a half metres wide. Like actually. Oh, Repco <laughs> replay here. Nice initiation there by both drivers. Grabbing the handbrake, slowing that car down, getting on throttle. Now watch through this part here. Was there a bit of a bobble transition-wise? Oh, just a little bit less angle there by Mitch as he came up over the hill. And Scotty had a nice, clean, wide line pushing out to that outer zone. Now remember, this is uh, Mitch's actual first battle. Uh, well, Fanger Dan getting the win here. Well, Stephen... Uh, Hey there, beautiful. Did you, Are you catch did you, up with these old dogs? Did you, yeah, these old dogs. Well, I, mate, I know where they are sitting, so if you want to go and sort them out. Uh, you get the win. Uh, yeah? Yeah, I actually thought um, it, it, it most probably going to go uh, one more time if I thought it was um, anything going to happen because uh, Adam hit me on the first run and I hit him and um, I think it must have been just down to the lead runs and I know when I led Adam, I just really tried to do the best lead run to what the judges want. So, and I left the door open for for Adam to get me. So, all right, you're through. Um, yeah, you did hit you, didn't you? You're gonna send him the bill for that? Might try to, yeah. Yeah, might have. Uh, a little disappointing, but uh, it's just one of those things, right? Round one, lots to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, one has one had to be um, the loser. So anyway, it was me today. But yeah, I, look, we traded paint and um, tried tried my hardest. I knew I had to clean some things up from the battle with Dave. So. Yeah, unfortunately, it would have been good to go to top eight, but anyway, it is what it is. It is what it is. One of the one of the favourites. We just watched it up there in the chase. Um, did you feel you had him or not? Oh, I thought I might have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. I couldn't see him behind me, obviously. So, yeah, dropped back a little bit and just just a few little mistakes, I guess. Oh well, mate. There's always another round, and there's plenty of those here in Valvoline Day One and So, Fang it in, defending champion goes through. Well, as Fanger goes through, we get back to our second half of this battle between uh, Mitch Lana and Scotty D. Scotty Dinsdale 
big horsepower too. Jay versus uh, the C33 Roller L. Scotty D not a, does never struggles to get some speed out of his cars. Yeah, look at that. Sitting right in the pocket there is Scotty D. As he tries to drive up the hill, nearly gets caught in the smoke. Doesn't probably have the drive that Supra does, but Mitch pushing a little bit wide into that outer zone, nearly dropping two wheels. So not quite ideal with a little bit too much angle as he came over the hill. But hey, a good clean run by both drivers, especially in the lead there. Uh, really pulled away from Scotty D as he came up over the hill though, hey. Well, you can see as he came up and over, there was smoke coming off one set of tyres, there wasn't smoke coming off the other. Yeah, look at that, Scotty D right up on the inside, bang, got on the throttle, rotated angle, but then look at that, the Supra just squatted down, hooked up, and just took off. Yeah, Scotty was really playing catch up um, as he came up over the hill there, eh? Big wild angle for yeah, the uh, got caught up in the smoke there, did well. Held the line, probably uh, Mitchell's a little bit off that inside clip as he come up the hill. What sort of tyres? I, I don't know the answer, but there's Supra's running. Um, Something. Try this is probably a good yeah. I actually don't know. But that's alright. He's got something. He it's certainly does. Up. Well, this man here qualified in third position on the line. The Carter Tukur Kaui, uh, Carter Tires Tukur Kaui machine. That is Troy Jenkins. He's got the NZ Vertex uh, GT Radials 180 RB30 power plant. That is Michael Thorley behind the wheel. See how these two go. Yeah, Troy driving really, really well in the uh, in the qualifying. Love, love yeah, to see. Yeah, very impressed with them yesterday. Yeah. I really love seeing it, eh? It's, it's so cool to see. 78 points, which was, like, that is good for wet conditions. Yeah, definitely. Showing his skill. Oh, look. There's my little man sitting in the ute. Lydia. She's hot. <laughs> what? Yeah, I just realised what I said. Hey, that, yeah. Um, hey, there's a nice, is that a McLaren across there? Okay. Yeah, must be. <laughs> but she here we go. One, two, three. Troy Jenkins leading out. <laughs> Michael Thorley here as we come into another battle for the top 16. Well, let's see what happens this time as Troy Jenkins gets into his drift. Kind of shallow, but he comes through, hits his inside clip, sets himself up nicely to come up and over the hill. That left front tyre planted on the inside as he comes through to finish. You can see Michael Thorley, a strong job in the chase position. We'll have a look at the Repco replay get Mr. Two Dimes to tell us all about it. Oh, is that me? Temperature hot. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. The next part of the battle. Good entry there by Troy. Look, you can see a little bit of tyre movement there, but got on the throttle nicely. Michael Thorley doing a, a good job in the chase, trying to get into that pocket. But Troy, just smooth. This is really, really good to see from uh, him where he's had a lot of uh, bad luck in the last seasons. Oh, here we go. We've got a... Wow! The Aussie battler has been pipped by Scotty D. How are they down there, Stephen, mate? Man, the big bus did the job. Oh, mate, she's not a bad rig. I'm um, so stoked to be able to um, battle with uh, Mitch. His car's a lot more peaked out than this thing, so it's probably a bit harder for him to keep up, but fucking awesome. He's a great driver. I'm just stoked to be back, and so thank you, so much thanks to John Atwood for letting me use this rig. Hopefully we'll have mine there next round. Hey, bro, remember it's PG-13, okay? Yeah. All right, let's move over. Mitch Lana and this beautiful Galore Pass uh, Super. Okay, bud, now you know how tough it is here. Yeah, for sure. Um, we're up against it this week. Obviously, three days to get ready and build a program. And uh, I've got to say, say thanks first to Steve at Galore and um, Brendan White and everybody that was involved in making this program happen. Unfortunately, we didn't get the win today. We only got one practice lap in chasing. And uh, yeah, it showed today, obviously. And we'll come back strong at round two next weekend or two weekends away. And we'll try again. Good to have you here, buddy. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. It's tough, all right. It's tough, all right out there jumping in a brand new car. Uh, he's got a little whipper of a Corolla over yeah, in Perth. Yeah, K 70 stunning. Yeah, driven with uh, Mitch, Mitch before many a time. Really good driver. So like to see him progress as the season goes with a bit more seat time. But here we go, second part of this battle. Michael Thorley leading out. Troy Jenkins. Well, off we go. They can see uh, good speed coming through as they set themselves up into the drift. Michael Thorley coming through. 
can see Troy just a little bit shallow on that, eh? A little bit of a bobble coming through that centre section. Hesitating a, uh, a small amount. Look at Thorley just pulling away. Good clean run there by Michael Thorley. Starting to get us. Uh, he's obviously done a little bit of a setup change. Well, he certainly needed to do a setup change, certainly after uh, what we saw, which was a, a hideous show at the first couple, but he's managed to peg it back. We'll see what the judges say when they uh, come through to determine who takes the win. Uh, you can see how important that first turn in every any drift course is. And well, the I first the, the first turn here is is massive. Yeah. If you don't get that right, you'll see ya. And look, Troy just didn't have enough momentum. Look, he's on the handbrake. Damn. Didn't get enough drive. Didn't get enough length. Hit the handbrake again. Try and drive it. Handbrake again. Drive it. And then he was playing catch up from there on. And uh, Michael Thorley, yeah, just threw down a real good lead run. Good to see, because you know he wasn't feeling obviously too comfortable after their their first battle. This is going to be a good battle, Steve. I oh, keep whacking you in the arm when I get totally excited. Okay. Well, that's okay. I would have... Most of the time I deserve it. CK Earthworks on the side of Cody Pullenbury. The man finished second in the championship last year. He finished second here to Fanger Dan in this round last year. He wants to get the top spot in both this year. He definitely does. And as I said before, out there in practice watching him... Man, he gets comfortable in the car. They've really uh, put together an awesome package, reliable, and just lets Cody drive and uh, really show. So let's see how they go here up against this big bar of beast. We've certainly seen a couple of wagons over the years. Ian McSheen being one of them. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But this one here is just something special, especially the fact that it's, I mean, it's got the wrong motor and it should have an RB, clearly, but it's an R31 Skyline wagon and it is insane. Barra power plant. It's yeah, first obviously uh, battle for Jason Ferrin and his yeah Aussie battling wagon, but we're up against two NZ, Cody Pullenberry. Watch this man lay it down here at Hampton Downs as they take off for the first part of their battle. Initiation smooth, big injury. Look at that, royal wide on the outside line there. And look at the throttle through there by Cody Pullenberry laying out a massive smoke screen for Jason to try and fight through. Oh, pushing wide though, just Cody dropping a wheel on the outside zone. Wow, did he just give away a few points there, boy? Just going a little bit hard. Jason did not bad. He was there. He was there. He was. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was going to lose it halfway through. You could see that he dropped away, but managed to claw it back. Yeah. Well, here we go. Repco replay. So this is the uh... Cody Pullenberry. Not, not what we want to yeah, see. So that's that's wheel one off. wheel way off. And the judges even talked about that in the uh, in the driver's briefing too. Nice but oh, what an entry here by this young fella. Love his driving, eh? Love it. Was that a wheel off for uh, the chase car, Fearing as well? To be. Thorley gets the win. Let's get him a seat for Kyber. I, he's, he's in disbelief here. Well, the setup change must have worked if you did it. Oh, uh, we did a little few things to it. Um, yeah, the NZ 180 is definitely feeling a bit better. Probably a little bit better in the head too. Well, that's the key part, mate. What do they say? 80% mental, 20% talent? That's it. That's why we need the crew, just to calm us down and you know, get us back in the, in the rhythm. So um, let's hook these GT radials back on and go back out there. Good boy. All right, just quick to go over to, just quick to, go over to Troy. Get a quick, quick uh, chat with Troy. Oh, well. It is what it is, mate. This looks like it's going to be a tougher season than last year. Yeah, exactly. Hey, it was, um, it was, it was a fun battle. It was really good uh, through that. but. Yeah, I just didn't get up as as close as I wanted to, and um, yeah, a little bit disappointed in myself for that. But um, overall, really good battle, and um, good luck to him. The, the Carter's tyres, GT86 has is, is done well over the weekend from from uh, from wet conditions to dry, and um, in these stupid heats too. So I'm getting ready to get out of the car. Go have a cold one. Thank you. Yeah, good bit of driving. All right, by both those brothers. Start the season. Not the obviously the result they wanted, but. That's all right, on and upwards to the next one. Now let's see how uh, this battle pays out with Jason leading out, Cody on the chase. He is an aggressive chaser, really like his driving style, but let's see how this barra powered wagon rolls out here. Does he pull a big gap? He does, look at him pull away from Cody pulling Barry, but Cody doing smart, tucking up on the inside, but look at this barra pull away as he comes up the hill. Cody pulling Barry trying to catch up, and look at that. That is phenomenal. That car just left them for dust. Wow. 
Wow, we that's you can wait till the replay on that one. That wagon has some serious grip. Steve, watch this. Repco replay here. Cody Paul and Barrow trying to keep up with him. Not a slow car, Cody. Watch the Barrow wagon come up the hill here. See ya. Watch this part here. Cody's right with him. Just pulling, pulling car lengths on him. I know he didn't have quite have the angle, but wow, that car has some serious grip and a thing to think about for the rest of the season. How do you battle that car to get up on the door? We've been talking about the Valino tyres being so insanely awesome with grip. They've forgotten about these ones here. We haven't seen them in New Zealand before. He brought them over in the container. He said, like, Steve, I've got a secret. Check these tyres out. There's the Estinos. Me and Darren used to run them. Yeah, we did. And I can tell you, they're a good tyre. I've still got a hundred and something of them sitting up above my workshop. Well, guess what? You've just had a half the D1NZ grid say, you want to sell us some tyres, Colin? Yeah, 265 40, 18, Zestino tyres, a really, really good tyre. And man, could you just see that happen? Cody Paul and Burry had nothing. He could not pull that gap back in. And Jason just left, just see ya. So it'll be interesting to see what the judges call of that. Um... How, how, how did they call that, you know, a gap being pulled? Jason didn't quite have the angle um, that probably he could have. But, wow, that yeah. was insane. And cool. Cody Pullenberry had to play catch-up, so he had to shortcut the first section. Same again. Well, let's uh, go down as we saw that beautiful side of Hampton Downs. Beautiful and green. Let's see which way Nick says. And it will be wow. the Australian that goes through. Wow, wow. <laughs> you know what? That's a great advertisement for driving a wagon. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, the family wagon takes the shopping down the, sh down the road. Not bad, huh? Mate, you coming up that hill, but that thing was piling it on. Yeah, so we dropped pressure a little bit. I didn't expect it to be uh, that much grippier when we dropped three PSI from practice to then. Um, but yeah, she, she definitely goes. So that was, that was good fun. Um, good battle, Cody. Well, keep it, Reed, and we'll see you in the next round. Thanks, Matt. All right, let's go get a uh, chat from Cody. I think Cody probably knows maybe that that uh, rear end on the first run, right? Yeah, uh, it is what it is. You know, yeah, just messed up the lead a little bit. And then on the chase, I just sort of fed it a little bit too much gas, yeah. spun the tyres, and yeah, he was off. Now I'm just playing catch up from there, but yeah, it's all good. Mate, it looked good. It's only one round, mate. You'll be there. Yeah, yeah, we'll come to Mount Smart and Bay Park. Bang some doors. That's what we like. Banging some <laughs> doors in Valvoline uh, D1NZ. The top eight's next. Stay with us live. Well, it's a Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship here. Hampton Downs, round number one. And I've just heard that Kurt Blackie has just withdrawn. Kurt Blackie had uh, taken the win over Connor Halligan. Now, that means that Sean Potros is going to go into the top four. So uh, that's news straight in. So it's a beautiful day here in the North Waikato, just south of uh, Auckland. Hampton Downs, a great place to go. Certainly round number one. I think it's round uh, number four for the uh, Super Sprint Championship. We've seen some great drivers and great uh, great cars out there on track. Certainly hoping you're enjoying yourselves watching New Zealand's best drifters out here on track, trying to tame their uh, 800 to 1,000 horsepower beasts uh, up over the, uh, the hill and back down again. It's only two turns, but you try doing it at that much speed and angle. Um, great day to see people enjoying themselves up on, up in the uh, the apartment block. And of course tomorrow we'll be back again here for the New Zealand Grand Prix. Certainly the biggest race on the New Zealand calendar each year. Hampton Downs certainly uh, going to put probably one hand on the tray if you've been the top top track in New Zealand. Let's have a look at some replays. Well, I just found out what tyres that big barrel wagon has. So he's got the Tri-Ace R1s and well, 
did that thing hook up and go. Just watch here, yeah, like Cody said, he put the throttle down too hard, lit the wheels hard, but even here, could not catch him. Look, at he, he probably pulled three car lengths just there. That is just gobsmacking. So has anyone else got Tri-Ace R1s in New Zealand? Uh, I found no fingers on the Tri-Ace. But they're not R1s. Nah, so R1s, I wonder if it's uh, under the gentleman's agreement near the 200 Treadwear. <laughs> Doubt it, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Who would know, but man, I love to see that. That'll be a, a good, good set of battles to come up yet here, Steve. Certainly is, well, all the information from Cole Armstrong. We certainly get given the information back to our phones. They go red hot during the drifting events. Yep. Uh, and you remember how we were talking about um, information before, if the humidity is high intake temps, less power. So I didn't know what I was going on about. But anyway. Well, welcome back to the Babbling D1NZ National Drifting Championships, round one for the Pro Championship here at Hampton Downs. We've certainly seen uh, the top eight as the helicopters are, now uh, they're landing. All the superstars are heading in to see, catch the tail end of the drifting Cole Armstrong. Yeah, I thought that might have been my, my good friend, Ethan Lang. He's, uh, he flies a couple of these. He's actually just shot down to Nelson. Uh, got a job down there. Thought he might have flown up just to catch up with me, see what I was up to. Is that how you get all these rides and helicopters and stuff? You're quite the superstar. Oh, I used to be, once upon a time. But uh, yeah, no, nah, he, he would tell me what type of helicopter that is. I'm not too sure. That's a white one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good work on that one, Steve. But yes, uh, that's sort of how they roll down there. Well, there's certainly going to be a fair few of those rolling in tomorrow. New Zealand Grand Prix here at Hampton Downs. I don't think it's, uh, it's, it's only a handful of tickets left to sell, so come along, see if you can be the final. Oh, really? Wow. It's a big, big event here, eh? It's a huge event. A lot event. of awesome cars, a lot of people here, a lot of, a lot of great atmosphere. So uh, here we have uh, Sean Potros. Now just uh, Sean Potros, he's taking on Kurt Blackie after Kurt Blackie got the win over Connor Halligan. Kurt, we heard in the break, Kurt Blackie withdrawn. Out, withdrawn. Oh man. So that's hang on, that's, deal. I mean, that's, at least he's, well, he's going to get championship points, but Connor Halligan's, Halligan's got to go, I feel ripped off. <laughs> it could oh, be it many. happens, don't you worry. It happens, it happens all the time. You're like, why didn't you spin out in the battle with me before? Because you just beat me. Well, what we're seeing now, we're not seeing is a bye run for... Uh, Sean Potros. Well, we should be. Okay, Sean Potros, he's having a bye run. Oh, lucky, because he had a big mistake coming in there. Big understeer. But look now, as he pushes wide, huge angle coming up over the, uh, over the rise there, Steve. As they come through to finish, we've got a few more cars heading back out on the track. Sam West is uh, the, the next one oh, out yeah. there. Taylor the James. Taylor James. See those guys both heading out. Yeah, dead right. So, oh, yes, yes, yes. Because Sean has now gone through. Man, bugger about Kurt. What's happened? The old reliable V8. Dang it. Told him to stay, RB. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting uh, battle right now. So Sam West, the new um, pro sport driver coming up into the pro. Yeah, look at this by Sean Potro showing it how it's done. Look at the lock on that thing as he comes up over the hill. Smoke billowing out of those rear quarters. Big high horsepower car that is the... Uh, that is 15, eh? Yeah, that's 15. Jordan's got the 14. Did you blow for Jordan yesterday? Oh, no. Not a happy camper. I would have laughed and said, oh, I'd be like, it wasn't, it was a 2J. I'm sort of eternally tense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so who was laughing? Is your heartless Carl Armstrong, but two times champion heartless. <laughs> motor damage brother is what I've just got, and he is beep, 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 gutted Kurt Blackie. So motor damage. Oh, what? You're kidding me. That is yeah, not had to, had good. Yeah, pull the pin. Motor damage, brother. 
Oh. Slightly disappointed. I'm pretty sure that's what those words say. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly <laughs> disappointed is definitely what he wrote there. Oh, he will not be happy with that. He's just had that thing rebuilt. Had a few uh, issues, I think, with an oil pump, if uh, it reminds me right. Put it on the dyno and had that thing collapse. So, yeah, back to the drawing board for Kurt Blackie. Still be happy with that result. All right, well, it's the RHP Performance 180 of Sam West qualifying fourth yesterday, going up against the ProWare S14 RB34 Monster Big Block RB Taylor James. Wow, look at that. Sam West bouncing around as he comes through that section, but what a line. Sam West, beautiful. Taylor James going off. What happened right there? Those new tyres, too much grip. See you later, Doctor. Sam West, 10-0 advantage. Woo! And you think that was because of the tyres? Without a doubt. Too much grip. What? Okay, too no, much grip. Fine. Went to get on throttle, couldn't do it. Car gripped up, bang, spat him off. Oh, wow, okay, okay. He will not be happy with that. Look at this entry by Sam West. Look at the car hopping around. Yo, whoa! Bang, entry there. Wow, Look, Taylor see. James going to get on throttle. Nah. See ya. And that's understeer, all too big understeer. Grip. Yeah, went to get on throttle. Went to get on throttle, breathed the throttle because he went to catch Sam West really heavily. Breathe, got off the throttle, bang, got to get back on it. Those rear tyres just would have given him a little bit too much grip. Bang, understeer. All right, let's go down to Stephen McIver. Who have you got down with you, Stephen? I've got Kurt, Bell Kurt Blackie's dad, Dave, here. Did, did Wolfie cough up a furball? Yeah, we've had a, a few issues with uh, oil pressure problems throughout the last couple of days. And then now it looks like it's done a bottom end bearing or yeah. cam bearing because there's uh, filings in the oil. And I... so we don't know where that, you could risk it and carry on. And then we wouldn't have a motor f uh, for two weeks for, for Mount Smart. So pull All the right. pin. All right, mate. Appreciate the time. By the way, uh, Kurt's gone to a wedding. Just thought I'd let you know. Oh. Devastating for that man. Kurt's Devastating. gone to a bit wedding, whereas I'm thinking, oh no, he's upset. Well, is that him in the chopper? Oh, I, I thought I recognised someone. You can certainly hear the sound of uh, a chopper coming into land. They oh. must have forgotten something. No, that's what it was. They're like, oh, sorry, we forgot Cole Armstrong. Yeah, they're Cole, back Cole doesn't finish until about 7 o'clock in the second time. <laughs> you could come back then. Yeah. But, wow, big advantage here to Sam West. I hope his spotter has told him in the air... Be smart, be safe. Give himself a bit of a half a car length on Taylor James. Now, Taylor will obviously, no doubt, lay down a big entry here. Be very frustrated. Look, the kit's come off now, both sides. Rear bumper's off. We'll be shaking his head uh, with a bit of frustration, but hoping uh, Sam West makes a bit of a mistake here on the chase run. But wow, what a mix-up. It can, it can, I could be wrong, and that didn't happen, but I think I might be right. And well, I mean, I've already lost $5 to you today in a bit, so I mean, those I'm a gambling tires. person, but I'm going to let you just <laughs> win this one. Those tyres might have just hindered him a little bit on that, I think. Yeah, but watch what he's going to do this time here. He is going to accelerate, and he is going to... Oh, he's going up against the 2J, so he won't be able to smoke it, but... of Sam West just sticking behind in the pocket hopefully not getting smoked out Sam holding it together as Taylor James pulls a massive gap there but Sam West sitting back got a little bit yeah. caught in the smoke but didn't do anything silly so but the, then that's the difference you got a huge advantage in that run to Taylor James but that can't make up for the numbers of 10-0 which is where we're going to see are we just seeing a pro sport step up into pro bang in the top four first round yeah don't forget this is the same guy that turned up into the championship last year and just won the first round in pro sport I mean he's good at it is he going to do it today yeah he's beaten me dang it once yeah once we'll, we'll rematch but here we go Taylor James leading out look at the car sitting down squatting just so much grip for that car look at it just pick up and go look at the gap he just pulls as he comes up over the hill here Sam West doing a good job really holding the car together probably not the best chase run you would see out there but I think after the huge mistake that um, Taylor did he should be uh, going through on that one and that's bad but they'll be pumped Sam West will be absolutely pumped on that one
I'm talking about being pumped. This is the Battle of Whangarei, and it's between the mayor and a councillor, essentially. Fang and Dan <laughs> Woolhouse and Scotty D. It's the Battle of the Northerns. Yeah. Well, uh, who did Scotty battle, actually? Uh, Scotty's Scotty. over here, so he went up against Mitch. Oh, OK. Because I was thinking, I thought that Scotty went up against Jason. I was like, man, he actually was able to keep up with them, but... Let's see, Bangers on a try ace too. Maybe not the R1s, but oh, I know that Mustang is pretty quick out of the gate and obviously through drift, so Scotty will have his hands full uh, coming into this battle right now. Well, let's see how he goes as our three times New Zealand drift king, current king, Fangan Animal House makes his way down the straight. Yeah, big initiation there by Fango, grabbing the handbrake, nice and smooth line through there, getting to that inner clip, smoking out Scotty D there in the back there. Scotty doing a good job, trying to sit in the pocket there, but Fango just pulling away with that massive horsepower <coughs> under that Mustang's engine bay. That's, uh, that's a quick car and a new engine to come, he's uh, rocking the Cornette. Nah, other other car. Yeah, in the other car. So this one here is the activation car, and yep. this, the next one is going back to... I can't wait to see that that bucking Bronco. The bucking Bronco that will be in... Look at that. Just smooth the finger. That's 20 years under the belt. Look at that. Very small corrections. Up over the hill. Down. Just getting out to that outer zone. Just this, real textbook this driving. This is like Kuro finger teaching his mokutuna. Yeah. Wow, what a mix up there, Stephen MacGyver, Sam West, give a pat on him on the shoulder from me. That, that, that is from Cole Armstrong, congratulations mate, uh, first time up in the big time and you're into the top four. That's what I came here for, Tay's a good mate, mean driver, I'm just privileged to drive, for, drive with guys like him, so I'm bloody pumped. <laughs> okay, let's put it on you, how far can you go today? I came here to go all the way, there's no buggering around here. That's what we like, mate, aggression. That's what the judges want. I think we need to talk to uh, Taylor about these these uh, these new tyres, mate. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, just I come in uh, probably a little bit hot, I guess, with Sam in the chase and jumped up on the kerb. As I jumped on the kerb, I went to turn a bit and the steering was just bound up. I could, honestly just couldn't move it at all. I don't know, something might have been bent from collision earlier or yep. something, I don't know, but couldn't switch and it just sent us off the track. So big, what it big is. learning, right? That's right, yep, definitely. Mate, we'll see you in the next round. Keep smiling, buddy, and keep that hat on backwards. Yeah, we'll be there. Sweet. Wow, yeah, so you just never know out there, obviously. I wasn't quite right, so you could have won that five bucks back, mate. Bit of steering bind, but here we go. Scotty D leading out. Bang it down, Woolhouse. Well, let's see what Scotty D can do in the camo parts. C33, the row as he gets ready to take on. Get up the hill he goes. Yeah, Scotty, just grab the handbrake as it comes through that inner clip there. Bang is sitting back quite nicely. As Scotty pulls off, getting into that outer zone, down the hill, look at Banger. But it's not, it can't have front brakes or something, eh? He always just grab, uses the handbrake to slow down. It's crazy, but uh, good lead run there by Scotty D. Real smooth. <laughs> Some of these people that are in the, uh, in the pits must be looking at like, you're going to flat spot your tyre. It's OK, we're going to change them in half a lap. That's it. But look at this. Yeah, transition here. Nice here by Scotty D. Up over the hill. Banger just sitting back a little bit, not pushing too hard to be fair. Uh, as I, I think he's probably got a small advantage over that first run, just a real clean lead run. But I have look, look at that by Scotty D. Tucking the nose in there. Banger dropped the wheel, I have to say. Scotty D coming up over the hill here, putting the foot hard down, getting out to that outer zone. Like, really, really good clean run there by Scotty D. Well, we look at the first run. It was a solid run by Fanger Dan. He managed to create a gap between himself and Scotty D. Scotty D just coming through. Again, a very nice run for him. It comes down to they were both great. Who made mistakes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always does. <coughs> Who made the greater mistake? Obviously, Fanger had a little wheel drop. And then yeah, the other one. So we get one D. person that yeah. gets gapped, gapped off a bit. Um, is that the same sort of sort of number, points number point deduction? The dropping yeah. points. I guess we'll find out. Uh, keep it read on the side of Jason Farron out of Australia. He's here to take on the Kiwis, and this is another Anzac battle. He's got Michael Thorley in the Vertex NZ GT Radials 180. This is going to be interesting here for Thorley. Hopefully, a spot has told him. Not a slow wagon. 
It ain't your uh, average shop wagon. It's going to take off. And uh, Ben Jenkins says, with the R1s. <laughs> They're not Zestino, Steve. They're... Yeah, yeah, my bad. No, my bad. Blame me. That's all right. So let's see how we go with uh, Michael Thorley and Chase. Jason, out front here. Wow, look at the heat haze coming off those cars. Yeah, it's definitely hot out there. Summer has finally come back, Steve. At last, at last, at last. Jason Fair and Michael Thorley. Fair and in the lead position. Big entry by Ferran, look at that. Pulled a gap already coming into this first part of the section. Look at the smoke that thing's laying down and just pulling a gap on Thorley. Thorley trying to close the gap back in. It's just, look at you just, just pull away like that. That's phenomenal. Wow. I mean, it's, it's uh, interesting to watch when it's, uh, we don't often see in drifting this thing called a tyre war. Yeah, 100%. And you can clearly see right there as they're coming up over the hill, uh, that car just pull away. Now, can be a hindrance, obviously, in the chase. How can you sit behind? But this nice, clean run here by Jason. Switches a little bit wide, missing that inside clip there, but pushing wide to that outer zone and just pulling like six car lengths on Michael Thorley. Well, pushing wide, but still not the fastest way around the track, and he still managed to pull away over Michael Thorley. You can see him come through and do that big switch. So yeah. now, right, you pull away six car lengths on a car, how can you chase a car that's that much slower than you? So, if someone was smart... Welcome. Fanger wow. going through. Fanger goes through. Yeehaw, just a little quiet. Yeah, the old boy can still go yeehaw. Happy with that one? Yeah, man, no, that's good. Eh? Um, I just really try to give um, Scotty a good lead run. Um, I'm just really trying to perfect that myself, and I think it just all comes together for the next run. Mate, you never stop learning. Oh, uh, you don't, man, and, um, you know, give it up to Scotty. He's got a really cool car in the build, and... Um, yeah, he's going to be definitely one to watch out for in the next coming rounds. He's, he's coming for you. Yeah, what, actually, just quickly, what do you got in the build, bud? Oh, I've got the E92 BMW, and it's pretty much the best opportunity I'm ever going to get to be good, so I can't wait to bring it out. But I uh, can't thank Frank enough. He's just a solid driver. He can fully commit. I sort of sacked it a bit there on the chase and a bit gutted, but <laughs> hey, it's what it is. You only get one shot at it, and hopefully he brings it home, fun a day all day. Mate, just, just, just quickly, uh, you are good. You're right, you made the top eight, so uh, Carl, just make it even better. Well done. Yeah, cheers for that, mate. Oh, cheers for that, mate. You are good, Scotty D. Yeah, well, here we go now. Hopefully the spotter of Michael Thorley has told him, big angle, slow that car down. Let's see how Jason does in behind here of Michael Thorley as they come to go up the hill. Grab the handbrake. Wow, Jason way up on the inside here. Thorley putting his foot down as they come up over the hill. Yeah, Jason struggling a little bit with a little bit too much grip. He wasn't able to really put the throttle down. Uh, the car was fighting itself as it came up over the hill. So a few mistakes there. Well, they'll roll back. How many mistakes did Thorley do in the chase compared to the lead, you know? Yeah, well, interesting to see. It's a keep it right on the side of Jason Ferrans. It's the Anzac battle. Come on, New Zealand. So look, wheel off to start with. Yeah, big time. Dawley, nice clean run here. Jason tucking up on the inside. Real, just real really bubble, straight really. through there. Yeah, real big bobble through there. But and it's hard, you know, when you get a car that does have so much speed and grip, it's very, very hard to sit behind a slower car. And it's not that Dawley's car's slow. It's not slow, you know. It's yeah. just that thing is frickin' quick. He needed to hit the high boost switch and just light the bags, as they call it these days, or the I, young I fellas. I totally agree with you. But a huge thank you to uh, TT Industries, of course, Valvoline Repco. Didn't know the judges uh, wanting to watch a few more re replays. Of course, Panhead, they're uh, the name on the side of qualifying here. This is Valvoline D1 NZ. Let's have a look at this replay. Yeah, well, they're wanting, I'm pretty sure, see how many wheels did Jason drop there. What was Thorley like up over the hill? And no doubt they'll go back to probably where Jason led out. You know, like a good lead run there in my eyes by Thorley. Not perfect, not a, not a 100 point run, but a good clean run. And let's see how many wheels. So did he take two over the yellow lines? So now, yes, they'll want to go back to lead lead. Yep. How many mistakes? Did Thorley do mistakes in behind or did he just get gapped? Now, of course, this is for a spot in the uh, top four. 
We've got Sean Potros, who's going to be going back against Sam West, Fanger Dan, the winner of this battle. See, so look here, Michael Thorley, just getting gapped here, no critical mistakes. Yeah, not no bobbling, movement. didn't drop a wheel, so I'm going to say it, Steve, right now. Like, I think the, the, the uh, <coughs> Anzac battle might have gone to the Kiwis, but I could be wrong. What's going on? Oh, it's it, who knows. Oh. Wow, one more time. So it was too close Don't to talk call. To them. Let's just sit no. <laughs> if you want to talk to them, talk to them. <laughs> okay, uh, second one more time of the day. Are you happy with that? Touch the me first one more time, mate. Get it right. Come on, mate. <laughs> get out of here. Take your take your shopping trolley and get ready. All righty. No, it's a shopping trolley. Okay, bud, you're still on the hunt. The judges weren't convinced either way. Uh, it's, it's better than losing, that's for sure. Um, I didn't realise how quick he was, so... Um, <laughs> I He's quick. I won't sleep this time, eh? Go get him. Go get him. And uh, Michael Thorley's been told, hurry up, you're going to turn around quick. Yeah, and, then, and just see. I didn't know his car was that fast. So, yeah, interesting to see. Uh, interesting to see out there these guys are needing to turn it around real quick because they are the last part of um, this battle here so let's just have a look here look at this car for a big old wagon probably in 1988 got the big four liter falcon motor in it just sits down and goes real clean run there by jason now i guess they called the gap that he created um, a big enough deduction because yep. in my eyes those wheels off and then the straight line were more of a deduction than him pulling away so yep. very interested to find out why the judges had called one more time in my eyes I did see it as a as um, I, I thoroughly, think, thoroughly winning that well I see anyway. I think they're going to come down to one word that you use and I think that they're going to say they don't think it was a straight line Let's, as opposed to a bobble Let's have a look at the battle tree anyway. Sean Potros, he's made his way there via uh, Ben Jenkins, Kurt Blackie, and now he's uh, heading up against Sam West. Fanger Dan, he's had a bit of work to do. He's, uh, yeah, just waiting now for the one more time with Mark Thorley, Jason Farron. It's going to be interesting. Then that's going to be, ooh, triads versus triads, possibly, or GT Radio, who knows? And Sam West had a great one over Jace Brown on his way there. Certainly uh, nice to see some few newer names out there. Sam West, we know how good he is. Judges uh, coming through to have a look at one more. Yeah, like, look at that. That's like... Well, let's yeah. see the I'm not a no, judge. Hang judges on. is hard to do. We, I didn't see. Is line in or out? Well, the whole wheel was over the line. Yeah, but if it's the whole wheel, it's actually two. Yeah, I know. So they've called the call. You know, they've yep. called it now. So, I, in my eyes, I think it was very lucky to get away with it. Let's see, because if it's over the line, there are two off right now. That's yeah. the white line. But is the ripple strip in? That ripple strip is in. Then the, the then it's one. Then it was only one wheel off. Yeah. So if then you go back to Thorley's lead, didn't yep. do a wheel off, didn't really do any bobbles. Yeah. But just got gapped. Yeah. So obviously the aggression and the speed that Jason was able to pull down was more of an advantage uh, to rectify out his wheel drop in the chase run. Have we ever had an Australian win around? Yes, we have. Uh, Matty yeah. Hill. Matty Hill. Didn't... Oh, no. no. Luke, Luke didn't win, Luke, eh? Luke hasn't won around. Um, Pros, no? Nah. Bo Yates. Bo Yates? Leave a no. no. Nah. Do you know who I'd really like to get over here? And he was talking to me before. Oh, I've got to try help. Is uh, Bagsy. He's over in Europe. Good driver over there, Monster Energy. Uh, I think he's got a, like a 180 or a S13, something like that. Good dude, drove with him a lot in China and uh, real keen to get him over here. Steve? All right, well, you know what? Why kick around listening to us battle on? We'll come back straight after break with some more D1NZ action.
sponsors of Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. We are watching round number one of the Valvoline D1NZ Pro Championship. We've seen uh, the best drivers in the North Island, arguably in Aotearoa, taking on the Hampton Down Circuit. Of course, great to join the uh, New Zealand Grand Prix. Nine, the 67th running tomorrow we will see the some of the best drivers in the world challenging for the coveted trophy Hampton Downs in the North Waikato certainly a picturesque spot right now the place is green we've had a lot of rain throughout the North Island and uh, certainly allowing this weather the grass is growing it's looking beautiful and uh, it's great to have some of the greatest drifters out there having fun on this playground oh it is it is good to be back you know it's been a uh, long off season well it actually hasn't i tell a lie it's been a short off season we just finished and bang we're back into it so uh, credit to all the teams for turning the cars around so fast uh making them look immaculate to get them here for yeah our first round here at hampton downs Certainly need to find a way of turning the dipper into a proper drift. Oh, through. look, look, we, we did, we, we did, we were wrong. He did win. Oh my gosh, I am in. The social media is going to blow up now. Oh man, oh, I forgot no, about Luke Fink. It's going to blow up. What, uh, he won in, um, in Adam's car at Manfield? Yes, Jesse got third. Jesse Greenslade, oh. I'm so gutted he's not here. My Luke, man. Luke Fink, I know you'll be watching my bro. We are friends. We're, uh, you don't have... Uh, but um, so this is the uh, the New Zealand Grand Prix held here tomorrow, and this is some of the best drivers in uh, in the world, arguably. We've got drivers from uh, all over the show. A few big names like Gil Trafford. Check out some of these cars out on track. That's the Central Muscle cars, and uh, this is the Formula First out there. Great to wow. see Kenny Smith out there behind the wheel. I think today the GTR NZ that is run what you brung, and uh, they are certainly bringing some monster. Uh, some I think monster actually one of, my, one of my old man's uh, friends is in, in that Richard Granger in the GTR NZ we class. Go. Well, this is the oh, Castro Toyota. Um, no. Nah. Welcome back to the Babylon D1NZ National Drifting Championship here at Hampton Downs, round number one of the 2023 season. Here today, we saw qualifying yesterday, and it is battle time today. Started with the top 24, moving into the top 16, the top eight, and now it's time, Cole Armstrong, to finish, to find the last spot in the top four. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> this is a good battle. I'm really liking Jason's driving style out there, so Michael Thorley's really picked it up as well. So, it's going to be a good battle coming up here next. I see Sam West uh, sitting there ready to go. He'll be up against Sean Potros next. And just remember too, we've got the uh, Pro Sport round next weekend yeah, uh, here with the uh, Matsuri. Calvin right now, my, my man Calvin, Calvin Clark. Clark, he's preparing the uh, freshly built S, uh, S13, RB30 powered. He'll be driving that. And uh, he's got Chris Rudnick coming over from the States. Oh, wow. Well, here uh, we go. Yeah. Rice Miata, you YouTuber. Gonna be here? Huh? You going to be here? Uh, I might come up for the day. I'll see how uh, my family's going. You know, the little fella. Got to make sure he's all good before I pop away. But What day? Saturday, Sunday? Saturday, Sunday. Yep, up here. Friday, Saturday again. or Saturday, Sunday? Oh, don't ask me technical uh, questions like that. I'm just trying to work out whether I can be here. <laughs> I think it's Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> Using live television to work out if I can be here with the commentator. Yeah, Saturday, <laughs> Sunday. So, uh, going to be good. Also, Jimmy Oaks, he's going to be uh, over here with uh, Guy Maxwell. Well, Those there's lads. a few names. There's yeah, a few names. And coming over from the States. And of course, the next, uh, next one for the uh, Super Sprint Series, I think, is Topol next week. Certainly looking forward to seeing uh, a lot of motorsport throughout New Zealand as we get ready. You can see those are the four cars left. Actually, there should be one more than that, isn't there? Fangers out there as well. There's two cars to go, and that will be the Keep It Rit R31 of Jason Ferran out of Australia and uh, the NZ, NZ, that's right, New Zealand NZ 180. The Anzac battle, we go again. Michael Thorley. Steve, it's getting hot here. I can tell you why, because we're nearly 
into the final battles of the top eight. Well, we are. We're nearly into the top four, and it's getting hot and steamy in this little office up here. I'm looking forward to this next battle. Let's see if Michael uh, has taken on board, how fast Jason is out there. Picks the pace up as they take off from, from that line. Hey bro. Yeah. Don't mention that thing that you just said because that was a secret. Oh. Oh. Gosh, let the cat out of the bag. Really? No one told me it was a secret. And thank you to Nick Hoyle as well. He's like, Steve, it's a Castro Toyota Formula Regional Oceania Championship, also known as CT Frock. That's a hard one to say. CT Frock? CT Frock, that's right. Which is a Castro Toyota Formula Regional. You know what? Let's just talk about the Valvoline D1NZ. Nice, Steve. Nice. Good save. Yeah. Damn, was it a secret? I feel real bad. Dang it. Such an idiot. That's all right. Here we go. The final bit of the top eight. Jason Farrow and the Aussie Battler up against Michael Thorley. As they take off for the first part of the battle. Look at that big barrel wagon thrown into the first part of the section. Already pulling a gap on Michael Thorley. Big angle as he comes up over the hill. Jason Farrow, look, puts the foot down and just... What? See you later. Oh my gosh. And this is, remember, what? this is Michael Thorley saying, I'm not going to get lost this time. I'm going to keep up. Yeah, I don't think he kept up with that, uh, kept those words. Because wow. that thing just up and left. That's cool, man. That's cool. I like seeing that. Shopping trolley doing a great job up front. Look at it. Repco replay. Look at this. They're together. What do we got? Three car links? Six car links. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> Man, that's cool. The Keep It Reap R31 barrel wagon as he comes up over the hill here, doing a nice clean line, tucking up. Probably not as tight as he'd like to be, be but not, not too bad. And just, wow, pulling a massive gap through there from Michael Thorley. So this is now where it's smart. Michael Thorley, he's going to be leading out. Does he go slow? Does he throw in some massive angle? Try and stay down a gear? Cook the tires? Really put a challenge out there for uh, Jason to try and chase. What's that name there? Do you know this person from... Oh, really? Rome's coming over as well. No, that's a secret. Steve! <laughs> No, Rome isn't a secret. Oh, uh, you okay. I could make... Oh, that's such a That's so up. cool. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so, Rome is uh, one of the FD drivers. Uh, drives one of the BMWs. Drives BMW. Carpenter? Yeah. Oh. There we Rome go. Carpenter. Oh, no. Char I don't know. I can't pronounce okay. that. Shrimp. Okay. I know the last name. I've heard Jared say it many times. But, uh, yeah, can't get it. Bad. Bad reader. So big, uh, welcome along to the uh, all those tuning in from the 24 Pacific Nations. Great to have you on board with us as we watch New Zealand's best drifters battle it out. We'll see the return of that Anzac battle. This is the final battle in the top eight. Yeah, Michael Thorley throwing it in here nicely here. Jason really having to hold the car up. Just sit in behind there of Michael Thorley leading out, but doing a good job. Have to say, doing a good job, really, to sit in wow. that pocket. That car is so fast. It is fast. So, if we're going to say, he's battling Fanger Dan. Fanger, pull the valves out, mate. Pull the valves out right now. So you're saying, I mean, I'm saying he's going to win this battle. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, not, not too many mistakes here by Jason. Just tucking up on the inside there. Good lead there by Michael Thorley, I have to say. Transitions nicely, tucks the nose in into that inner clip, pushes out wide, but Jason's just able to sit with him. If you're looking then at the excitement of the battle, it's a lot more exciting, you know. 
Jason was right there on the battle. But here we go. What do we got? Top four battle up, Steve. Top four battle at semi-final time. We've got the uh, Renan Harrison performance, 182 JZ under the bonnet of Tonega Sam West going up against the elite performance. 2JZ S15 of Sean Potros. Let's see what they do as they head down the straight here. Hampton Downs. Look at that transition there of Sean Potros. But Sam West sitting with him right in the smoke. Does he transition and come out in the pocket? Sam West doing really well there with Sean Potros laying down an extremely good lead run right there. Sam West doing really well though, like he was in the pocket of smoke he could not see and did well not to transition too late, too early, did a good job. Well with Squid going up against Unluggy, let's go with these personalised plates as we check out Sean Potros, it's a good hard lead run but check him out right in the pocket, what happens here though? He transitions through the smoke uh, screen just there, probably hesitated just a little bit, unsure where he was on the track. Seen that he popped through, Here we got go. on throttle. He yeah, just... good lead run. Good lead Maybe run. Maybe Sean Botros Sean. walked across and went, hey, cuz, give me some of those R1s. Could have, could have. No, Remember, he, he this, is the the first, this is the first round for Sam West stepping up. But here we go. One, two, three. Jason Farron gets the win, the Aussie battler. Mate, that barrier is so quick. Mate, that must feel so much fun to, to drive up there. Uh, it's amazing. It's like nothing, like... Some of these tyres are just insane. It, it's such good fun just being able to put that grip down and put that pace on when you need it. Um, amazing battle. Um, yeah, shout out Keep Root and the boys. Jassy in the pits and the fam. Got my three boys, three under four, which is uh, awesome to have him here. It's amazing. It's great to have the wagon on NZ soil. Stoked to get through. Is that top four? No? Mate, you're up against the defending champ, Fangadan. Go put some new feet on if you need them, all right? Let's get it. Yeah. Oh, I love this. I love that. Uh -huh. one it. Let's get it. And is it good? He's got oh, his three got boys cut. here. Just quickly, mate. Hard luck. Uh, that's drifting, eh? So I've got a few things to take away from the weekend and uh, get ready for Mount Smart. And All right, buddy. Got to go. They're racing now. Yes, they are indeed. Steve, run us through. Sam West, look at that thing bouncing around. Big entry there, but Potros right up on the door. Pushes wide. Sam West might have just been given his first top four battle. Sean Potros pushing too hard. That was crazy. Too hard right there. Sam West did so well to Sean hold that. Potros will never give an inch. He will never give an inch. What's going on? I mean, is, he, is there a thumbs no, up, bro? You got this? Yeah, yeah of no, course. He just come in. Watch this Repco replay here. Look at Sam West. Look at Sam West's car. Popping and bouncing just here. Bang, throws it in. Good entry. Sean, very shallow, trying to keep the proximity. Bang, gets lost in the smoke. Takes That's the bang. Off. Yep. Bang, wheel off. Sam West is just about to go through, I think, a mile. I'm not even going to say it. Wow, what a drive by Sam so West. First Towering a local. Yeah, buddy. Here's the uh, replay with uh, Potros leading out. What an awesome entry there by Sean. Textbook drive, a little bit wide on that in a clip, but look, Sam West sitting in the smoke, didn't get lost, transitioned a little bit late, hesitated. Beautiful run there by Sean Potros out into that outside zone. But no real big mistakes there by Sam West. Wow. I have to say, what a drive from the pro sport driver stepping up. We got realistically, Potros was a pro sport champion, just pushed through, come in, shook things up last year. Look at Sam West doing exactly the same. Yeah, I know we haven't seen it though, but it's also so fantastic to see the D1NZ drivers staying on track. We haven't seen them sitting there running over the grass there. We've seen more damage from our other classes this weekend than any of these drifters. Fantastic job showing the absolute precision in the driving on pro drifters in New Zealand. Oh, you said it there, Steve. You said it. There was contact. They held it together and they finished that run in style. What a drive by Sam West there. The team will be absolutely wrapped. Uh, but yeah, just that, uh, Sean Potros just pushing that a little bit too hard. You know, I think they're looking here. Was there a mistake from Sam West? Did he drop a wheel? Was there anything going on? I couldn't see anything. He just transitioned a bit slower, hesitated. Yep. He was caught in the smoke. It was a smart drive. Very smart drive. So what we're looking at is we're looking at mistakes. Let's have a look and see who takes the win. We'll go down to Nick. Which way are you going to throw it? Are we going to throw thumbs up to Sam West or is it going to go to Sean Potros? Go. Come on, judges. You guys can deliver it. You can make a decision. That'll Cole and I will. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, obviously, Sean just did an absolute stellar lead. Stellar. Uh, but that mistake... 
in my eyes, was big enough to, to give the win, winter sandwich. You <laughs> what? What? Can we get the judges to give us a bit of feedback on this? This is a little bit confusing in my eyes and no doubt the people back home as well. Um, I'm not too sure how that happened, but anyway, one more time. <laughs> they, they called it one more time. Yeah, um, wicked lead and then on the chase, I just, yeah, there's a little bit, a couple of mistakes there, so I'm happy to go again with Sammy, he's a wicked driver and yeah. You were coming and hold of that chase. <laughs> oh yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go get ready one more time. Wow, okay. Nothing like a little bit of drama for the first round, buddy. Another shot. I know, just more driving, eh? I'm keen. Me and Sean said before we went out, we'll put on a party, so we'll do it again. Go get him. Man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, I wish we had a, to find out from the judges what just happened there, because there's contact. You you fall off, you, you're out. So obviously they seen something we didn't there. Steve, obviously we're up in the back of the tower suffering um, something for it so yeah it's, it's, it's sometimes tricky it's a judge sport uh, I don't know what runs through everyone's head but that's a tough tough job tough call well I mean certainly a big season ahead yeah it is and we've got two fresh new judges Danum stepping into the role Andrew Redwell I know it's hard that's why I sit here and I talk with you mate it's way easier I can critique them big time well, I mean, it's uh, it's going to be interesting going through. I mean, as judges, I mean, you don't always make the right uh, right call. I know that, uh, of course, it's about banking points, and these guys are going to try and bank as many points as they can. Moving into our next custom concrete round two weeks time. I'm excited. Yeah, Mount Smart. It's uh, always a showstopper right there. Usually rolls into the night time. There is a lot of contact. Really, really technical little track there. So, going to be good. Then we roll on. Taupo. Yeah, well then Taupo, that's a big one. Uh, we certainly always enjoy it. I know the drivers like it. That's probably the one place they do a lot of testing. From there, Manfield. Yeah, high speed. Love Manfield. Real fast, flowy track. And where do you reckon we should go for the final? Probably our hometown, Steve. I think so. Bay Park in Tauranga, which of course will be the grand final of the Valvoline D1NZ. It will be, and uh, as always... What a show it will be. An exciting year ahead. Hopefully everyone else uh, can make it out to all of these great, great events we've got coming up, especially Mount Smart in two weeks. It's, uh, it's going to be a good bit of fun, and uh, I bet the drivers are looking forward to it as well. Yeah, well, tickets are certainly on sale at uh, d1nz.com. Mount Smart always sells out, so if you want to get your hands on, on some, some tickets, tickets, make sure you go to d1nz.com and find out some more about the ticketing information. Yeah, that's the one, Steve. But here we go. Well, I've just, uh, I'm just heard. I'm still so confused, man. Jace, Jason Fearon's car is overheating. Too much grip on those tyres, creating that Barrett overheat. Now you know what it is. It's a Ford. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> oh, oh, classic. Well, so, uh, we're obviously in the commentary area here. You can see it up on the screen, kind of where the flags are. And, uh, the, but, but we've got the reflection in front of us. That's the apartments across from us. But race control, the team in there, we've got Anne, the team from uh, the team here from Hampton Downs, and Joe. She's uh, yeah, they're grabbing all a quick bite to eat as she's making sure there's, that she's happy to start releasing cars. There's a massive, t like, 30 TVs up on there, and they're looking at every single screen, seeing what's going on. It's a bit easier for us. We've just got big, big screen checking us out yeah and a big thank you to the motorsport club and everyone else there's certainly a lot of uh, volunteers who do a great job here in, uh, in New Zealand and Aotearoa to look after the, the motorsport yeah and, to keep us going you know, uh, the and her team yeah well big shout out to Theo he's here first ever drift event soaked oh, he's yeah he's, he's down there he's so cute he's got his as, as Stephen McIver said he's got his mum's locks but uh, you know what that's enough verbal Blah, blah, blah from us. Let's uh, catch up with more D1NZ action after the break. It's the uh, Valvoline D1NZ, Hampton Downs, 
and uh, the hazard lights are on Jason Ferrin's car as he attempts to cool the barra down. Now, my question is, does that mean that that becomes part of a competition caution? Is that part of a mechanical? I guess, uh, you know what, let's just let them get out and drift. So he's going to go through the section and uh, just try and get some hot air through. I asked earlier on if the temperature, the humidity may play a factor, and I'm going to the point that maybe it's going to. Jason Ferrin certainly not uh, stepping it out as he comes through the drift section. Hoping you're enjoying yourselves here. If you're here on track, if you're watching across Australia with the uh, team from Fox and KO. Fingernail Woolhouse, he is a three times New Zealand drift king. Only one more championship more than Cole Armstrong, who is the real deal in that uh, beautiful Castrol Century Batteries Mustang. And uh, potentially the last time we're going to see that car this season because he is coming back with the new machine, the old machine, back again. Cornet Ford under the bonnet. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see that. He was <coughs> actually saying the the Roush, I think it's a Roush. The Roush motor. 8s, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That motor's still waiting for pistons. So, yeah, that's why he's got that motor as the backup really wants to bring the uh, spec R5D back out. Yep. Because uh, that thing is an animal, and especially at those concrete rounds. I just love seeing him, especially Bay Park. He yes. would come in pop it in, and just sit the back end of that car the whole way around that wall. <laughs> I mean, it's so almost, awesome. I mean, it's like, stop sh saying that it shouldn't be done. I mean, just let these guys back at it. He can do it. Absolutely. So uh, it'd be good to see that car no, out look, there. That's, uh, that's the rubber down. I bet the, uh, I bet the, some of those teams are going to wish we had that rubber on our part of the track. Yeah, I wonder if that's, you know, does this rubber that we put down, does that affect circuit racing in, in every way, any way at all? Well, it, uh, it actually does, but that's why we're using a different section of track. Thank you to the director, because I had no idea. Big clean-up tonight, and uh, then they'll be straight into action tomorrow. Of course, oh, okay. it's the Castro Toyota Formula Regional Oceania Championship, <laughs> which is uh, here this weekend, and we will see the New Zealand Grand Prix, the 67th running, coming up very, very soon. I would have thought they actually would have wanted some more grip, because I know when we do Rod Mullen's driveway, we put... You know, rub it down. We do put rubber down. All right. They go we'll faster. Be back in a sec. the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship and it is top four time. Fanganan going up against Jason Ferrin. Keep it Reet versus the three times and current existing champion who is going to take it out, Cole Armstrong. Two triasses out there. Has Fanga got the R1s? Have they taken the valves out of that Ford Mustang? Jason uh, really driving real well in that in uh, Barra wagon. You know, he's brought his own car over. You get comfortable in it, you know, you see, like, Mitch has had to jump in yeah. in the Supra. Uh, not comfortable. Bang, Jason's jumped in his own car, knows what it can do, and uh, really shows now. So let's see. Bang and in, leading out. Jason. Well, let's see what he can do. The Century Batteries, Castro New Zealand. Artia Mustang, Fanganan behind the wheel. He's got the speed of the Barra. This is two Ford motors going up against each other. Yeah, look at the angle that Fang is pulling through here. See, Jason just can't sit quite behind the Mustang. It has a look at that. Yeah, yeah very low, shallow. Very shallow oh, wow. through there. And look at Fang at Dan. Brother, this is how we do it, Kiwi Soul. A lot of angle there from uh, Fang and Dan and that Mustang. Really turned the boost up on that one. Okay, well, when you talk about boost, supercharge, yes? Yeah, you can't turn it up, I don't think. But I know, but I mean, so it is actually a Super yeah, yeah, Coyote yeah. V8 is a supercharged one, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's like eight, 850 horsepower or something, eh? So it's just one of the babies of the field. Yeah, but watch this. Big angle here from Fanganan. Showing some skill here. Jason really struggling to sit in behind with a lot of the grip. Look at it. Really wanting to drive right up onto the edge here. So not quite so, probably what the judges wanted. No, that's right. Massive angle on the entry here. Yeah, slowing the car down. You know what? Hard luck. It's the driver in front's job to lead. Exactly. And realistically, Fanger was on throttle, yep. pulling a real good smooth line. He's holding that angle the whole way. Now, right that's one of the thing track. the judges did say. If you can hold your angle from the top of the hill to the bottom, that's exactly what we want. And Fanger Dan just did that. 
Well, we've got a half of our audience is in New Zealand, the other half is across Australia and the Pacific, and I'm sure the Australians are going, nah, man, our mate, mate, is going to go through. Jason Ferret, I'm sure he's got some supporters out there. Oh, I, de- I definitely bet he does. Keep it right. What an awesome uh, thing he has going on, and I have to say, a stellar drive from that man. I'm really uh, enjoying his style. It's it's good. He's, he's here last uh, last season and uh, campaigning Fanger's old car, actually, wasn't it? <laughs> he did too, yeah. So, real Matt cool Quack. to see. Yep, Matt Quack drew him the keys. But, yeah, real good driving here. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying watching Jason drive. Uh, this is going to be an interesting battle because now it's on the flip side, right? Let's see if Fanger can keep up now with this barrel wagon. It's going to come down to mistakes, I hope it goes. Uh, look, it's just going to be cut and dry. We're going to find a winner. Let's see what they can do. Jason Ferret keeping it right as he charges down in the barrel wag. Yeah, look at that. Already pulling a bit of a gap on Fanger, but nothing too crazy. Look up over the hill here. That barrel wagon is not a slug pulling away from Fanger Dan like that. It is hot by the looks. There was some smoke coming out the bonnet just there, Steve. That bearer is uh, definitely a bit warm. And he's just, oh, please tell me he's going to get back. Or is he pulling over? What is happening with that car? He's pulling. Yeah, no, it's just a bit warm. warm. It's just a bit warm, mate. Yeah, but he's not making it up that hill. <laughs> what do they say about Ford, sir? Um, first <laughs> on race day. <laughs> Backwards driver oh, returning on classic. foot. What a good drive there, Jason. Real okay. smooth, real smooth lead um, by him. I don't think it's anything too crazy. It's probably just got a bit hot. May have to just reset the computer or something along the lines. But uh, <laughs> just fixing this. Real good drive. Repco replay here. Look at this. Nice and wide there by Jason. Good clean angle. Threw a bit more angle as he tucked the nose in there to get to that inner clip. And watch it just see ya. Look at that. Yeah, well, that's a slow motion replay that we're that watching, is, and you just see all of a sudden. He doesn't have massive angle, right? He doesn't have a lot of angle as he comes over the hill, but he has enough, you know? It's like watching a, uh, I don't know, like a Gran Turismo game when you hit the NOS button. It is. It, yeah, right there, Steve. Oh, well, this is a second uh, second battle in the semi finals, and it will be the Elite Performance. Uh, Stock Street, 2JZ powered S15 of Sean Potros going up against the Reed and Harrison Performance, RHP 180, it's 2J versus 2J, Sam West in the chase position. Yeah, nice entry there once again from Sean Potros, real early on the throttle. Bit of a hesitation, grabbing the handbrake that Sean, uh, Sam pushing a little bit deep again, but look at the length that Sean Potros just had pulled on Sam West as they came up the hill. Sam just washed a little bit wider as they come round into the uh, first corner. Oh, I look, just Jason's see the top, Yeah, the top of the screen, we've got uh, Jason Ferrin making his way back on under toes, so it uh, might take a little while to get them back in there. Let's have a look at the Repco replay at the run we've just seen. Yeah, awesome entry here by, by um, Sean. Look at that. Sam really trying to get up on the pocket, but just washed a little bit too wide. Are Falling we throwing advantage then? Who are we right. thinking? Well, look, nice entrance here by Sean. Sean grabbing the handbrake here, stalling the car up there. Did that put off then Sam West? Is that what the judges called it maybe in the last battle where Sam slowed the car, causing Sean to have the contact, you know? I'm not too sure, but good lead run in my eyes. Like Sean Potros, man, what a driver. Sam West, hats off to that man too. Whew. Look at Fanny Dan, he is having fun there. All right, let's have a look at who's taking the win. Wow, Fanny Dan, Dan gets the taking win. the win. Awesome work. Yo, Mr. Defending Champ gets the win. Hey, how, but let's just be blunt, how quick is that station wagon? Oh, that thing, I was just laughing in front of me. Like, he's pedaling the hell out of that thing and... Um, yeah, it's definitely fast. Um, you know, we've got a lot more that we could put into the Mustang, but we're just playing it super safe and just making it easy to drive. Um, easy on the gear and really just focusing on the clipping points. So, Now, are we going to run this car, the activation car, or are you we going to see the big boy back? Nah, I'm going to make it hard for myself and um, bring the challenging one out. When? Uh, next round. Mount Smart. Yeah, yeah. I just want to hear that um, the new Cornet 
racing engine uh, screaming around in that atmosphere. It would be awesome, mate. It's it's been it was we got we got here we first round. You, you're not you're not done yet. Um, can you start the year by successfully? What, what? Um, I just guess you know, like there's no pressure on my back. Uh, you know. Hang on a minute, mate. Just hold, hold fire. Well, hold fire as we see two over rotating cars. There is fire there, really. When uh, what has happened here, and was there contact made? Yeah, I think Sam West was definitely pushing pretty hard on that one to try and throw a uh, big entry there, knowing Sean Potros was behind him, and he yeah, just slightly over rotated on that one. So of course, under the temperature, we uh, we caught off and we'll just let it let the cars wait there for the, the interview to finish. But no, hot cars, we're sending these things here. We don't want to cause damage to these engines. These drivers here spend so much time and money on them, and uh, we can see that uh, obviously an issue there. We'll go back and check what we can from uh, the replays. So certainly, they'll be looking at plucking cameras to find out a little bit more information about what just happened there. Yo, here's the entry here. Look at it again, that thing is just bouncing around, he's throwing it around, a little dirt drop there, on throttle, but nah, just over rotated with Sam West, so Sean Potros did excellent there, just to sit back, wait for a second, over rotate, and uh, power on through there, so uh, real good drive, good control there by Sean Potros. So does that mean we're going back to Stephen McIver and Fanger Dan, are they still there chit-chatting? Oh, Fanger's yes. probably, oh, okay, go on, let's carry on then. Yeah, it'll be a quick chit chat because the cars are coming in. Just quickly, you feel good about whoever you're up against right now could be Potros. Yeah, yeah, I, I know he'll be coming back for me from uh, last year here. So I'm <laughs> um, looking forward to it. Uh, he's a good driver and just proud to have the Century Battery Mustang on the, on the podium at the least and um, just doing well. Right. Go get it, mate. Thanks. Yeah, he's definitely driving really well. His finger come back. You know, defending as such, but having fun, you know? Having fun, yeah. And he's uh best way to back up your third title is to try and take it out of the next round over, which is round one of the 23 season. Bang it out, looking happy behind the wheel of that left-hand drive. Castro, Century Batteries, Mustang, RTR on the side. It's the best way to uh, just about start a championship. Less stress, less pressure. You're just out there having fun, doing what he's good at. And uh, Did really Did you do starting. that with your second championship? Yeah, we brought out a different car too, did the yeah, same, wanted to challenge same yourself. Thing. Yeah. It was, was that Teratonga? Yeah, it was too, yeah. brought out the old girl. The OG Unicorn. Yeah, someone stole that name. I won't mention it. There we it. go, thumbs up, Sean Potros. <sighs> Big sigh of relief on that one, Short. So guess who you're up against? Uh, finger Dan. Bang it in, okay. Oh, yeah, we got... Um, you got history? Yeah, we got history, so it'd be good to go again, especially at Hamptons too, so. But, um, yeah, the car's going good. I can't, wouldn't be done without elite performance. I'm backing me and Jordan, so the crew looking after the car, it's doing mean. So the weather's playing ball, so let's just hope the sun stays out. There's no rain and it'll be a wicked final. All right, mate. Good luck. No, so it, as it stands at this particular point in time, if I'm correct, uh, Sam West will battle for third and fourth. But we're just waiting an update on Jason Farron because his car stopped. Oh, no. So, yeah, yeah uh, no. But let's just talk about your, your progress this weekend. Oh, on bloody pump day. And not a better guy to lose to than Sean. He drives hard. I know it to put 110% into my lead. And I did. It was too much. But happy as still, eh? Pumped. What have you learned this weekend? That Darren Kelly set my car up and it feels like it wants to kill me every time I drive it, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> just hold on and just try to do the best I can. Well, that's a good thing, right? But the most importantly, you've stepped up to D1. Yeah. Do you feel that the step up is greater than maybe you expected, or is it what you expected? The Pro Sport boys are phenomenal yeah. drivers. I think the step up isn't as big as I thought it was. You know, they're all big names, but, you know, we come up and we drive hard, and you can just see we do good, so pumped. All right, there is a potential that you could finish third in your first uh, D1 thing. We're not confirming that yet because we're going to see what Jason's up to with his car. Yeah. Better head back and just prepare for a potential battle, mate. Will do. Cheers, mate. Oh, it's good to see Sam West, <coughs> towering a local, stepping up, just like what he said. It's actually not the uh, biggest step going to the bigger tyres because they are such skillful drivers out there. Are these young fellas. Cole, what did he mean by Darren Kelly set up my car, it feels like it wants to kill me? So Darren Kelly Motorsport, uh, which is actually uh, situated here at Hampton Downs over the backside at his new property. 
he's helping a lot of the drivers here understand how their suspension works. Uh, Darren is very knowledgeable uh, from the years um, developing his car, especially the JDR, and understanding how to really maximise your suspension. So. Darren, Mota, uh, Darren Kelly Motorsport uh, doing a lot of suspension setups for the guys. So if you are one out there, uh, get in contact, no doubt, with Darren. And uh, he may be able to help you as well, even uh, with road car, you know. Anything like that, he will be keen to help. So Darren Kelly talking to, uh, today, uh, we had a bit of a chat to him earlier on, and he said, um, can't make it this year, still pretty keen about next year, D1NZ. Is he back to go and get four, and are you going to go up and beat him to it? <laughs> I don't know. Who knows, Steve? Who no, wouldn't, knows? wouldn't it be nice to win a championship when you have a little boy there to watch you? Oh, would be magical. <laughs> but anyway, we're just going to check out some uh, runs here from earlier today as uh, the awesome team uh, clean up the track here for us. So look at this. Sam West here just over-rotating against Sean Potros. And look, look what Sean's trying to look through. Fanger Dan here showing his skill. Bang, big angle here, smooth angle. Look, no corrections on those front wheels. Watch him rotate, comes up over the hill here and holds that angle the whole way. Jason had nowhere to go and really struggled to sit behind him. So kudos to Finger in that, uh, in that run there. But Jason Ferron, man, I'm pumped with how that lad is driving out there in that barrel wagon. It's a ripper. He's doing the Aussie boys proud. Big purple beast out there. This show's too light. I know Fanger's car is not slow. And that thing is still just whipping away. Like, yes, it definitely doesn't have the same angle. Obviously, we can see there, too, there's a bit of, uh, a bit of smoke coming out from the bonnet there from Jason's car. So hopefully nothing major has happened to the old Barra. And uh, he can, yeah, get into hopefully his first ever top four battle up against Sam West out there look at this beautiful day a few clouds around a little bit of light breeze spectacular way to finish the uh, the day with some aggressive drifting well certainly a great show being put out here today the uh, D1NZ finishing a great Saturday Three day meeting here at Hampton Downs. It finishes tomorrow. Still a few tickets available if you can make it there. Of course, we'll continue to be live on Sky, I think TV3 tomorrow, as well as KO Fox Sport in across the Tasman. Still a great crowd enjoying uh, watching New Zealand's best drifters battle it out. This is the first round of the 2023 season. Uh, let's take a look at how they got there. Of course, uh, two drivers heading into the final. Still no word whether or not we're going to see a battle for third and fourth. Sam West versus Jason Ferrin. But as we look at uh, this battle, Sean Potros versus Fanger Dan on the top. Potros takes out Ben Jenkins. Kurt Blackie, Sam West into the final with Fanger Dan. How did Fanger get there? Took out Adam Davies. Big battle there. Scotty Dinsdale as well. Another big battle. Jason Ferron, you know. Fanger didn't have it easy all day. Neither did Sean. Bit of a shame Kurt Blackie went out with an engine failure. That would have been a top battle there, but that's how we got there, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go. We've what? got one car lined up so far. Well, one car sitting on the front straight here at Hampton Downs. I can ready to another. go through. There is another very, very loud one. I want to know if there's going to be any more cars going through. Maybe uh, maybe it's time for somebody to whisper. The director, maybe we whisper in my ear and find out the information because are we seeing a battle for third and fourth or are we going straight to the final? And I can see the thumbs up. Fang is certainly going to be making his way out uh, underneath our commentary box window onto the front straight and we'll line up side by side. Yeah, we're not hearing anything yet. And remember, I don't know if you'd... Once their battle is ready to go, then Jason must have to call a five minutes. But 
haven't heard anything yet. So, so has Sam? Or not, yeah, nah, look, these two are going. Well, has to Sam hold. West got his first podium in the Pro Championship. Yeah, we're not hearing too much on the, on the old radio there, Steve. But I. Ho, 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 ho. So it uh, looks like. No, we've got a battle between with Sam, Sam West, West and Jason Ferrin. Should be the next battle up yeah. because it looks like Jason Ferrin is going to make the line. Now, of course, one thing that he would have had to do. Well, hang on. What's going on here? Are they going to go up and do a tour around? Because we can't go. He's, <laughs> hang on. They're in the box. <laughs> Okay, well, oh, ladies and gentlemen, go. Jason Ferrin will not run. There's a technical advisor has advised that he will not run, which means we will be running the final of round one of the Valvoline D1NZ. We can see him warming up the tyres out there. And uh, let's talk about the man he's taking on in the elite performance. Link Engine Management, Smith Industries, Top Tune NZ, Stephen Soul Customs, 2JZ powered Nissan S15 is Sean Podros, and he is going to be going up against the Century Batteries Cash New Zealand CTV Performance RTR Ford Mustang 800 horsepower supercharged V8 from Whangarei three times in current Drift King Thanger Dan Woolhouse this is round one of the 2023 D1 NZ National Drifting Championship Hampton Downs let's get ready to go it's final time Here we go, Steve. Sean Potros leading out Fanger Dan on this final battle here. Now, this is the same as last year. These two met out. Sean Potros, massive entry on throttle. A little bit shallow there. There's contact. There's contact there by Fanger Dan. Oh, Fanger's pulled off to the side. Wow. Line. But we here, look at the young fella just driving away from it. I'm sure he'll be slamming the roof. Happy with that one there. What happened there? Wow. We've got, we got some deliberation to go, Cole. Yeah, we are. We are because... There was there was a big a big handbrake drag there by Sean Potros coming into that first corner, stalling his car massively. That's where the contact came from, Fanger. Sean needed to be on throttle really a lot sooner, but he yeah. was too shallow. So grab, watch this here on the Repco replay. Awesome entry by Sean. Bang! Out there, not quite as wide, but look how shallow he is. Holds the handbrake, holds the handbrake again, bang. Contact. Sean needed to be on throttle. That's not a decel zone, that's a throttle spot. Wow, there we go. So we're almost saying that the uh, look at that handbrake, driver, bang, stop, bang, stop, boom, contact. Lead driver Banger had nowhere forced. to go. Wow, there we go. And this is why we've got a two times champion. This man knows what he's looking at. Cole Armstrong, the man with the big call right now, have to agree with him. Yeah, it's, I, I, I'm not a judge and I don't know exactly what they were calling on, but I call that Sean Potros fault. He was too shallow, tried to drag the handbrake. We talked about it before. Yep. You grab the handbrake, it was something that um, one of the lads wasn't able to do out there. Wait, but look at look it here. Up. He gets out wide, but look at where all the other black marks are. Sean is a so far out. in. Grabs the handbrake, holds it, doesn't want to come in line. Grabs it again. Bang. Banger makes contact. So at no fault, I see as at Fanger Dan right now, and that would be a 10-0 to him. Uh, causing, causing. Yeah, causing him to uh, come out of drift. So hard one there for Sean Potros with such an awesome entry and driving so well, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I have You're been You're seldom uh, wrong. <laughs> I've, I've got you, bro. You're seldom wrong. Let's go with the man himself, a two-time champion. Well, this is the second half of the final. Let's see what Fang at Dan Woolhouse can do as he leads out Sean Potros. Potros. He is desperate to get a round win. Sean Potros will be right on the door of Fanger Dan through this. Look at that. Right in the pocket. But you're not going to spin around the three-time D1NZ champion Fanger Dan coming up over the hill. Look at that by Fanger. Sean Potros, oh, what a wow. chase. That right on right the hit. door. <laughs> wow. I almost thought that Fanger Dan was going to be the first drifter that hit the grass this weekend. No. No. That is some skill right there by those boys. What a drive by Sean Potros. He will be, he won't be happy about that. You know, a bit of a mistake by him just having to grab the handbrake that extra time. And you can't have that. When you've got a driver right on your door and you do a mistake, grab the handbrake, slow your car down, they've got nowhere to go. Bang, in the door. Banger. Had to pull out a drift and, uh, you know, end the part of that uh, first battle. So 
Real good lead there by Fanger, and what a chase there by Sean Potros. I told you at the start of the uh, event, that man is going to be one to uh, watch this year. Well, we'll certainly find out if he is one to watch. Which way did it go? Does this one go in favour of? I mean, it could go any direction. We don't know if it's going to be an OMT, if it's going to go to Fanger, if it's going to go to Sean Potros. Are they going to agree with Colin Armstrong? Are they going to disagree? We're about to find out as these cars start to head down towards Stephen McIver. There's certainly going to be words spoken. You know, they uh, so far have been wrong on one. You know, Sam, where's Sean Potros? Obviously, no, they've seen something. The that... judges were wrong on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, they've seen something that I didn't. Um, we are up in the box here, so we don't exactly see live track. So it is a hard one, but kudos to the judges. First round out there Andrew Redwood, uh, Dana Templeton, and uh, Joel Counter. Joel Counter. Awesome work, lads. Awesome work out there. Hats off to you. Hey, you know how I've always been mean to you about uh, you and a sort of battle that you had with some guy that's in the judging? Did you know that that same person, Joel Counter, has gone up against Dana Templeman and has a 100% winning streak over Dana? Wow. Good work. Good work. There you go, Tony Counter. <laughs> I love it. But awesome, uh, Steve. Thank you very much again for... Uh a uh, great first round here and look at this the old dog versus the new little pup love to see it out there from these two boys right i'm just waiting on the call now where we're close to time because we've got to be off this lovely track so uh, if someone could tell me who won that'd okay. be really well i handy. have the call in my hand and in third place is sam west we know that we've got a second place do you want to go straight to first just go straight to first please straight to first in the century batteries cash on new zealand the three times new zealand drip king <laughs> fangin animal house all right Woo. i would love to have a chat with you but i think we need to do a podium presentation boys get over there congratulations to both of you oh just a quick chat mate defending champ first run get the job done yeah no just just really focused on doing what the judges want uh, all weekend. Um, I think I did that last year as well, and just good mindset and a good and car under my belt. And you're really sweaty. Oh, get, over, get over there, get over there. Podium time, folks. Yes, here we go. The very first podium for the Valvoline D1NZ in 2023. And in third place in his first time up in the big show, driving the Reed and Harrison performing one in SX, Sam West! Trophies will be presented by Rod from Valvoline, our wonderful sponsor here in our 20th year. And in second position in the elite performance, this San Silvia S15, give it up for Sean Potros. And your winner is your defending champion in the Valvoline D1NZ, driving the Century Batteries, Adi Amasang. Here he is, Fang Adan. And that is your official podium, and Rod from Valvoline giving the winner's trophy. Put those up. There we go, boys. That's your first round of Valvoline D1NZ. All I want you to do is open those bottles in front of you quickly and spray some champagne because it's so hot and someone needs to cool down. So there you have it, folks. That's what it looks like. Our very first round of Valvoline D1 NZ in 2023. And we've got a new boy on the block, Sam West, Fang and Annual Defending Champion, and Sean Potros. But guess what happens tomorrow? Live from 8.30 in the morning, we are back racing here because tomorrow is New Zealand Grand Prix Day, the 67th running. And a young kid, Lawrence van Hopen from Netherlands, is on pole position. It is going to be another bumper day, so make sure you join us because it's a whole lot of fun and motorsport's pretty cool. We'll see you tomorrow.
Yes. <laughs> 